going to be all right, ma'am? Oh, yes. Yes, of course I will. Yeah. Out for a herd heading north on the Sedalia Trail. I was off over there and I saw you get off the stagecoach. Well, what made you ride down? Well, people don't usually get off the stagecoach out here in the middle of nowhere, especially a woman all by herself. Well, this isn't the middle of nowhere, and I'm not alone. My, my husband's going to meet me. Oh. His name is Roger Turner. I'm, I'm Mrs. Turner. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. He is going to meet me. I, I wrote him. And he is going to. But... Thank you. I'm so tired. The journey was very long and very tiring. All the way from Philadelphia. Yes, ma'am, but why did the stagecoach put you down way out here? It's as close as it comes to our ranch. How far is it to your ranch? Thirty miles, I think. You see, when I bought it, Roger didn't want to be near people. He... I'm sure he's going to meet me. So am I. Look, well, maybe he didn't get your letter. Oh, yes, of course, Pat said he didn't get my letter. That's why he's not here. Oh, the poor darling doesn't know I've come. I, I must go to him at once. Well, you can't walk thirty miles, ma'am. Oh, I, I suppose not. Even in Philadelphia, it would be too far. Look, why don't you let me take you to your ranch? The herd's going to be grazing the next couple of days. They won't need me. I, I wrote more than once. I, I wrote several times. Maybe they didn't mail my letters. I would appreciate your assistance, Mr. Nolan. Suffer, man. I'm not very hungry. I've put you to so much trouble. Oh, I haven't been in trouble. We'll get to your ranch tomorrow, and I'll go back to the herd. No trouble to that. It's sweet of you to say so, but I hope we haven't missed Roger, my husband. He'll be furious. He's really a gentleman, but he does become. It's all been my fault. Your husband a cattle rancher? Oh, no. He, he's an astronomer. Astronomer? I know Texas seems a strange place for astronomy, but Roger has a theory. You see, the air out west is so much clearer, and well, he doesn't care much for people anyway. I bet the reason your husband didn't come to the stagecoach is because he got busy looking at some of those stars. In the daytime? Oh, that's just a wolf up there in those hills. I'm sorry. We were only out here six months before I had to go back east because I was... You need some sleep, ma'am. 
You slide down there. Ain't exactly like sleeping in a bed, but uh, once you sound asleep, you won't notice the difference. Well, you forgot to cover yourself up. It's gonna be kind of cold tonight. See the ranch now. Sight's better than mine. Who would you say was on that horse? Some fella, I don't know. Mrs. Turner. Well, now. This ought to make Mr. Turner real happy. Or will it? As far as I know, she ain't supposed to be coming home yet. Well, that's Mrs. Turner. Yeah. Well, maybe she's all right now, hmm? I ain't gonna deny there are large salt deposits on this ranch. And I ain't going to deny that they're worth money. It's very kind of you, Mr. Gunnison. I further ain't going to deny that the Gunnison Salt and Coal Company like to get its hands on this ranch. In a proper and legal manner, of course. It ain't a matter of law, Grinby. It's a matter of price. Point of correction, Mr. Gunnison. There is a point of law involved. If there is or if there ain't, a lawyer will always find one. Go ahead, you say. This ranch was purchased by Mrs. Marissa Turner. And by Mrs. Marissa Turner alone. I wasn't very well when we came out here to Texas. Matter of fact, uh, Mr. Turner has not been off the ranch since he got here. Be that as it may, Mrs. Marissa Turner's name is the only one that appears on the deed. The man just told you he wasn't well. My point, Mr. Gunnison, is merely this. A valid bill of sale to the ranch can and must be signed by Mrs. Marissa Turner. Well, that's going to be a little difficult. Uh, my wife is back east. Mr. Turner? Yes, Kinch. Ms. Turner ain't back east. What are you talking about? I'll take a look. Well, gentlemen, my wife is here, which should take care of any little difficulties about our business dealings. Although I hope she didn't come back before her cure is... Uh, excuse me. Cure? How is my husband, Hutchins? Oh, he's fine, ma'am. Oh, that's good. Welcome home, Miss Turner. Hello, Kinch. Hello. Hello, darling. What's, what's wrong, Marissa? Well, you've no right to do that. Where's my husband? Oh, Marissa. Where's my husband? Oh, I hoped and prayed this would never happen again, Marissa. Miss Turner, you know who I am, don't you? Yes, you're Will Kinch. And you know Hutchins, don't you? Of course I do. He works for Mr. Turner. So do I. Isn't that right? Yes. Well, we'd know who Mr. Turner is, wouldn't we? He's not my husband, Mr. Nolan. If you say so, ma'am. Please come with me. Help me. Roger! Roger!
picture. Oh, come in, Mr. Nolan. I'd like to talk to you. Sit down. I'm uh, terribly sorry about all this. Marissa is, well, she's acted strangely before. I can bear witness to that. Where did you meet Mrs. Turner? Well, I was scouting for this cattle drive I'm with, and I saw her get off the stagecoach out there in the middle of nowhere. I'm very grateful to you. See, I, I, I didn't know she was coming. She should have stayed longer. She isn't really mentally ill, Mr. Nolan. It's just a case of nerves, and it's, it's all my fault. I should never should have brought her out here. What do you do out here, Mr. Turner? I'm an astronomer, and I'm thoroughly selfish. I thought I could do my work better out here. And I can, but uh, the isolation. Well, Marissa, she hated it so much that she broke down. She blames me for it, I suppose. That's why she pretends not to recognize me. Does this happen very often? Yes, that's why I sent her back east to a... Well, it was really a rest home. It wasn't an asylum at all. Well, I know you won't want strangers hanging around at a time like this. Well, I regret that you had to go so far out of your way. If I'd only known she was coming. I did write. I wrote to my husband. Marissa, I never got that letter. Why should you? You're not my husband. Am I someone you know at all? Yes, yes, you're Henry Walker. I never heard anybody named Henry Walker. How about you, Hutchins? Nope. You came from Philadelphia with us. I came from Philadelphia with you. Where's my husband? Miss Turner, you always said you trusted me. Yes. Well, trust me now. You go to your room, lie down. You need some rest. No, not before I see Roger. Marissa, what can I do? What can I say? Tell me where my husband is. Tila. Tila! Take Miss Turner's release to her room. You know who Tila is, don't you, Miss Turner? Of course I do. Do you think I'm insane? Tila, Mrs. Turner's come home. I am so glad. Oh, uh, Tila, is Mr. Turner in this room? Yes. Where? Tila, Miss Turner's very tired. Will you take her to her room? You are Tila. Yes, I recognize you. And Kinch? And Hutchins? Only my husband. But that picture there on the mantel, that'll show you who my husband is. Mr. Nolan, uh, you're a stranger. My wife wouldn't suspect you. Would you mind getting that picture, please? Roger and I took that picture when we were married. That'll prove they're all lying, that I know what I'm talking about, that I'm not insane. Well, Mr. Nolan? It's a picture of you and your wife, Mr. Turner. I'm sorry. Marissa isn't always like this. She's always a very charming, very considered hostess. Now you can understand how anxious I am to sell the ranch. I want the money to take her back east to look after her properly. Salt, salt, Mr. Turner. Gunnison Salt and Coal Company still want to buy, but uh, 
Do you think you can get your wife to sign the bill of sale? Well, frankly, I don't know. You've seen the condition she's in. Seems to me uh, Mr. Turner could sign for her. Wouldn't be legal. Ain't nobody would contest the sale. Contest or no contest, the sale would not be legal. Just sire, be a human being for once instead of a walking lawsuit. Am I your lawyer or not? You're my lawyer, wouldn't yes. Wouldn't be legal. What would be legal? Have the court declare Mrs. Turner incompetent and appoint you guardian of her estate. You mean she's insane? Has the court ruled on the matter? No, no, of course not. Mr. Gunnison, we're wasting our time. Just uh, how would Mr. Turner go about having his wife declared, uh, well, not right? No, I won't do that. Seems to me you got no choice, Mr. Turner. It's for her own good you'd be doing it. There's a law. Bring Mrs. Turner to the Pikesville County Court. No, I will not expose Marissa to a, a public hearing. Well, then, make application for a circuit judge to hold a hearing in this house. I'd be glad to make that application for you. All right. Mr. Grandy. Yes? Before Mrs. Turner went back east, she uh, tried to do away with herself. Against the law. Well, Mr. Turner wouldn't ask you this, but as a friend, I've got to. Supposing that Mrs. Turner, well, died. How would that affect the sale of the ranch? Wouldn't affect it at all. Just take longer, settling the estate, deciding on a legal heir. Thank you, Mr. Grimby. Now, Mr. Nolan, you uh, join me in a drink? Well, no thanks, I guess. I better get on back to the herd. Now, you don't mind if I have one, do you? I need it pretty badly. I sure hope your wife gets better soon. That's what we all hope, Mr. Nolan. Now, thank you for bringing her home. That's all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Nolan, Mr. Nolan. Take this and go quickly. Now look at it later. They mustn't stop you now. Please. I am not mad. Then why were you sent back east? Because you were ill, mentally ill. It was my nerves. I, I couldn't stand the isolation. It's because you were ill, mentally ill, and you still are. But you're a lovely woman. Stop it! Tila, take Mrs. Turner to her room. Miss Turner screamed? Yes, Mrs. Turner screamed. Why? I told her she was insane. That's why she screamed? Yes. You're a liar. Look, she's a very attractive woman, and she's my wife. You got this ranch to sell. You drive her far enough, and she might kill herself. All right. All right! Just don't call me a liar. Taylor. Is the man out there my husband? When I came here to beg for bread, you gave me meat. When I asked for a little corner to sleep in, you gave me a room and a bed. You gave me work. You gave me respect. Is he my husband? Taylor, is he my husband? 
No. Prove nothing, though, Pete. The man in the picture could be a brother. Yeah, but you know how valuable salt deposits are. Now, these men were trying to sell that ranch. Mrs. Turner didn't have any reason to lie. They did. Uh, Mrs. Turner is sane. They're gonna well, have... I think she is. Well, we got to go on to the two pictures. One in the locket and one in the house. But maybe that's enough. How would we come in? Well, you said you're gonna graze the herd a couple more days. Give me those two days to see what I can find out. Besides, it's... We've uh, run into pretty women before, Pete. Oh, it ain't that this time. She's pretty all right, but well, you ought to see how helpless she is. Besides, there's something about those men I don't like. Uh, I don't like them either. Well, you ain't never even seen them. Well, I won't when I do. When's that gonna be? Well, Mushy can cook for two days without getting hung. Three days, no, but two days he can manage. You're going with Pete. You don't want to take a chance on losing your scout, do you? Oh, it's my idea now, huh? Well, do you? Nope. Well, all right. It's just one thing. What are you going to do? March up to Turner and ask him to confess he's an imposter? He ain't an imposter. He's an astronomer. I mean, the real Turner is. Supposing a real astronomer did turn up at the ranch. If the man representing himself to be Turner is an imposter, he wouldn't be very happy about it. Hey, that's an idea. Last thing in the world he'd do would be to invite that astronomer into the observatory. Yeah, and then if he started backing away, making excuses, we'd know he was an imposter, and we'd come back here and get some help and clean up the outfit. That is, of course, if they let you leave. Well, give us a couple of days. We ain't back. Come after us. Hey, you come up with such a good idea, you ought to come along with us. Oh, I'll look after the herd. Thanks. Yeah, but it sure was a wonderful idea, and... Yeah, but where are we gonna get this astronomer? What you looking at me for? Now, wait a minute. I don't know nothing about the stars. Sure, I seen them, but mostly reflected in the soup. You know something, Pete? Wishbone's got a frock coat and a top hat stashed away someplace. Yeah, and with that beard. Now, wait a minute. Nobody nor nothing's gonna make me try to be something I ain't. No, sir. Not nobody nor nothing. No! Well, I don't like this. It sure looks natural. Yep. He's just laid out in the pine box now. I'll get the horse. Now, Mr. Favor, there's only... I don't know what it is, but there's something missing. What's missing is my brain. I can't quite put my finger on it. Mr. Favor, these here I'll look real good on, Mr. Wishbone. Those there what? Where'd you get these? I bought them off a feller in San Antonio. He said they'd help me read. Did they? Nope, I still can't read. But I got them real cheap. Now, what do you got there? What are you gonna do? Now, just stand still, Wishbone. Stand still to be made to look like an idiot? There. That's all it needed was the final touch. Mr. Favor, I hereby announce that I'm quitting this drive, and furthermore... Professor, climb aboard. Climb aboard what? Oh. A wishbone. Put him on. I ain't got the time right now, but the instant we get back, I'm quitting this drive. Yeah, sure wish. Let's go, Professor. See you. Oh, pretty nice spread. Yeah, it's all loaded with salt. It is. You better put your specs on. Now, how am I gonna fool anybody? I don't even talk like an astronomer. Well, put your glasses on, keep your mouth shut. Fine. That'll make me blind and dumb. Now maybe you can figure some way to make me deaf, too. I wish I know a little something about the stars. I can probably handle anything that comes up. Come on.
you stop that? Makes you nervous? Yes, it makes me nervous. Now you're gonna have more than that to worry about. Mr. Kinch, that Grover's coming back. That second fella don't look like much. Well, he might be a doctor. That Grover might be bringing a doctor out here to examine Marissa. We can't let them in! Marissa Turner's got to be declared insane publicly. Think of the chance! I thought of all the chances before I even told you the idea. You threw in with me. Well, I, I thought it was going to be easy. It'd be easy. Take this. Put it under your belt where it won't show. I don't like guns. I need it to protect your investment. Now go on to your wife's room and keep her company and keep her quiet. What's bothering you, Teela? There is not enough wood for the stove. Hutchins, go out to shed with her and get some wood. Teela, better figure on a couple extra for supper tonight. Come in, come in. Thank you. Hope you don't mind me coming back like this. Oh, why should I mind? Oh, no reason, I guess. Uh, you see, when I left here, I rode into town to get some supplies for the camp cook. Mostly ketchup to drown the taste of his cooking. <laughs> yeah, I've been on drives with cooks like that. But while I was there, I happened to run into the professor here. And I mentioned that I just met Mr. Turner, the astronomer. Professor knew all about him. He did? Yeah, he asked me as a favor to ride out here with him. Said he'd like to meet Mr. Turner and go through that observatory with him, talk about the stars and stuff like that. Well, I, um, I don't have to tell you, Mr. Nolan, that uh, Mr. Turner ain't very free in his mind right now. His wife ain't better, huh? Afraid she ain't ever going to be better. Well, I, I guess in a case like that, you wouldn't want us hanging around here and letting the professor meet Mr. Turner and going into that observatory room with him and uh, all that. I don't know. Might be good for him. Get his mind off his personal problems. Of course, you know that uh, you're not going to get into that observatory for some time yet. Why is that? Well, the professor here knows that astronomers only work at night. But you can stay for supper and afterward. Uh... Well, thank you very much. We'd be glad to. Come on in the parlor. Oh, uh, what's the professor's name? Wish. Wishingham. Wish. Wishingham? Just Wishingham. Well, pleased to meet you, Professor Wishingham. Come on in. What college are you connected with, Professor? Oh. I say, what college are you connected with? Uh, professor ain't connected with no college right now. All right, Professor? Mr. Turner? You ever hear of Professor Wishingham? Well, the name is familiar. Oh, sure. Uh, all these astronomers have heard of each other. Professor Wishingham's heard of you, Mr. Turner. He is not Mr. Turner. I don't know where my husband is. What have you done with him? Marissa, everybody knows about your condition. Suppose we... I want to know. Did you kill him? Is that why you're trying to drive me insane? Miss Turner, nobody's trying to do anything to you except to make things as easy for you as possible. You carrying on this way, though. How do you expect your husband feels? He is not my husband. Miss Turner, why don't you go up and... I know. Go to my room. Lie down. Rest. Sleep. As if I'd wake up in the morning and everything would be all right again. You must have killed him! You must have! Poor woman. Not very pleasant for you, Mr. Turner. No, it's not. You 
got to tell me, Tina. I don't know anything. You're lying. Are you afraid of them? All right, you're not afraid of them. What did they promise you? They? It wasn't they. It must have been. What did Henry Walker promise you? What did he promise you, Teela? He said that he would marry me. But you believed him? You were sure a white man would not marry an Indian girl? It has nothing to do with that, Teela. It's the kind of man he is. Selfish, cold, a liar, a thief. Perhaps a murderer, Teela. You were kind to me, your husband and you. But he loves me. He's using you. He needs you to help. I'm not proud. Maybe it started because there was no one else. But afterward, afterwards, you saw what he tried to do to me. He'll have money, Tila. You'll be something left over, something he'll be ashamed of. Why? Because you'll know him for what he is. How long do you think you'll be able to hold on to him then? You're right. I will not be able to hold on to him. But you are also wrong, because it doesn't make any difference. You love him. For whatever he is. I will tell you one thing. If you were in my tribe, you would rip your clothes, lie on the ground, and the earth would be wet from your tears. My husband is dead. Your husband is dead. This is where I work, Professor Wishingham. Yes, sir. Telescope, huh? Yes, of course. Hey, you got a hole in the roof. What? Oh, professor likes to joke around. Don't you, Professor? Oh, what the professor is mainly interested in is just what exactly you're working on. What am I working on? Uh-huh. Oh, I don't understand. Well, you're an astronomer, ain't you? Yes. Tell the professor just what you're astro what you're astronomizing on. I'm studying the northern sky right now. Northern sky? We happen to be in the south. I'm talking about the northern star field as seen from here. The telescope is pointing due north. The professor understands what I'm talking about. Well, that's right. Well, uh, do you mind if the professor takes a look through this thing? No, not at all. Go right ahead, professor. See a thing. Nothing wrong with the telescope. Oh. Must be the glasses. Darn things aren't good for anything except to keep the wind off your eyeballs. <laughs> what do you see, Professor? The stars. Professor does like to have his little joke, doesn't he? Yeah. Ursa Minor is quite conspicuous this time of year, isn't it? Uh, you're mighty well told it is. You getting a good fix on Cassiopeia? Who? Cassiopeia. 
Try the telescope. Oh, yeah, clear as branch water. Uh -huh. Also, you'll notice that Orion is especially bright, isn't it? Yeah, this is the time for Orion to be especially bright, all right. Professor, Orion is in the southern part of the sky. You can't see it through the telescope. You're not an astronomer. You don't have an ordinary school child's knowledge of the stars. That ain't a reason to pull a gun. Well, I'm glad you can see that. Now get over there. You can let him up now, Wish. Well, well, we figured if you weren't Mrs. Turner's husband, you wouldn't know so much about the stars. Well, obviously I, I do. Yeah, but if you were Turner, you wouldn't pull a gun on us. Why should you? Let's go downstairs and talk it over the rest of them. What's your wish? Needed to do that to an educated man like the professor. What is he, too old for a drover? He's a camp cook. Should have stuck to his pots and pans. Now, we're going to keep you and the cook out of the way for a few days until Mrs. Turner is committed. If we head back to camp pretty soon, our boss is going to come out to find out why, and he won't come alone. He's bluffing. Why should a trail boss bother? No, he's not bluffing. Why not a trail drive without a cook? That's pretty hard to handle. No, and you're going to write a letter to your boss. I don't think so. He's going to wake up pretty soon. How would you like to watch Hutchins work him over? All right, I'll write it. Have you got some paper? I have. Here. Tell your boss that uh, you were wrong, that uh, Mrs. Turner is really insane. Well, he's not Turner. How come he knows so much about the stars? He was Turner's pet pupil, brought out here to help. That's a laugh, ain't it? Yeah. Tell him that uh, you're staying on a few extra days to uh, help out at the hearing. you think they'll bring us any supper? I don't really mind being so hungry, but my nose itches. You must answer my questions. I'm not here to prosecute you. I am here to help you. You haven't believed anything I've told you. What you told me has not been easy to believe. You say this man is not your husband, yet everyone here has testified that he is. They're all in it together. They killed my husband. This picture shows you and the man you claim is not your husband posing together. They changed the picture. My husband took that one. Have you a picture of yourself and the man you claim is your husband? Yes. Yes, I have a locket in my... Well, that is, it, it was in my valise. I gave it to the drover. Where is he? What drover? Well, he was here last night. He... He came back with a professor wishing him. A professor? From uh, where? Well, I don't know. He didn't say. Do you see him in the room now, Mrs. Turner? Of course I don't. Do you think I'm... 
you do think so, don't you? A drover and a Professor Wishingham came here. Why? He wanted to confer with my husband. And did he? My husband's dead! How do you know? Tila told me. Did you tell Mrs. Turner her husband was dead? No. She's denying it because she's in love with him. With your husband? No, my husband's dead. She's in love with Walker. Walker isn't my husband. Mrs. Turner, I wonder if you know how common such delusions of being plotted against are. It's not a delusion. You were in the East recently? Yes. Where? A rest home. I have a letter here from uh, Dr. Thatcher. Do you remember him? He wrote to your husband. He was very hopeful about your speedy recovery. On the letterhead, however, his establishment is described not as a rest home, but as a sanitarium for the mentally ill. All right, all right, I'm crazy. I don't know who I am. I don't know who anybody else is. Just stop asking me questions. Mr. Turner, would you take your wife to her room, please? Well, you see, she might do some harm to herself. Tila, stay with her, will you please? I'll fill out the proper papers at once. You'll be appointed executor of her estate, of course. Where are they? You know those two drovers were here when the judge arrived. Were they killed too? What have they done with them? Where are they, Tila? They're in the observatory tied up. They're simple men, drovers. They came here to help me. They're going to die. After the judge is gone, they're going to die. You know that. Kinch and the others can't let them go. I'm going to free them. You can run and tell. But I don't think you're that evil. Hutchins, bring the judge's buggy around. Uh, please excuse me, will you? I, I don't feel too well. Certainly. I need a drink. He's taking it hard. Mr. Kinch, I suggest you don't leave Mr. Turner alone for a while. These things aren't easy. I know. Tila, see the judge out. Thank you. It's very sad. Very sad. Please, this way. I have to do it. I must show you. Upstairs, quick. And please be silent. <laughs> Haunted look in her eyes. I, I don't think I'll ever. Well, I'll look out for her. She'll have a good life. We got those drovers to think about. Come in. Where's the judge? He just left. Not out the front door. He didn't. He just went out. He left him in the hallway with Teela. I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Turner. They made such a convincing case against you. At times I almost believe them. Trapped in there. You can't get out except through the house. You're unarmed. You hear me? We hear you. Got the yield? Yes. We know we did wrong, but there's been no real harm done. That's not the way I understand it. Nolan. Yeah? You come out, we take you and the judge and the cook with us for two, three days' ride, and then we turn you loose. All we want is a head start. We ain't killers. No. 
How'd Miss Turner's husband die? Old age? No deal, Kinch. We're not unarmed. If you don't believe it, you just stand there. How long do you think we can hold out? I might not be missed for a couple of days. Well, we'll have to wait till dark. I'll make it out through that opening. Burning four people alive. Why don't we just get out of here? Why don't we just run their horses off? The judges don't work that way. Ashes are silent and safe. First one man murdered. Now four more. No, Kinch. I'm not going to let you do it. I ain't asking you. Tia. Drop it, Kinch. trouble, Miss Turner. Listen, still breathing. Will you stay here while I ride back to town and send the marshal out with some men? Yeah, we'll stay. Will you take me with you, Judge? I don't want to stay in this place a minute longer. Of course. You can stay with Mrs. Neal and me as long as you want. Only until I get rid of this house. Mr. Nolan, Professor Wishingham, I... You don't have to say anything, Miss Turner. We're real glad we came back now. <laughs> Did you hear that? She called me Professor. Mr. Nolan, what will happen to him? He'll probably go to jail if he lives. I think he will live. I think I will be with him always somehow. And I don't think you... Carl, you and Quince get these on back. We'll check for some more strays down the way. Need to get cured or something? Well, he's kind of out of the way, isn't he? Yeah, nothing to sell to out here except gophers, maybe. Might be he's taking a shortcut to Buffalo Gap. Yeah, this is the shortest way. That trailer take him twice as long. It's none of our business. Come on. second too soon. I want to thank you. Well, glad we could help out. We, uh, we're out chasing some strays and spotted you down here. Well, I want to thank those strays, too. Your drovers. Yeah, I got a herd over the way. Can't figure what those Indians want with you. No medicine? Medicine? Yeah, it doesn't taste too bad, and it's got a kind of a uh, kick. What's in it? A little of this, a little of that. Mostly alcohol, huh? Yeah, I got a little of that, too. Well, uh, thank you again. You're two nights of the road. Hey, I wouldn't uh, be going off by yourself if I was you. You, uh, you know, those Indians might come back. Well, I'm afraid I haven't got much choice. 
You can ride along with us, go back to the herd. We'll be taking off tomorrow, ride right along as far as the next town, huh? That's very kind. I appreciate that. I, you sure your boss wouldn't mind? No, he's over in Fort Liberty. He won't mind anyway. You're more than welcome. I'm Dr. George Timpson. Uh, Roddy Yates, doctor. This is Clint Forrester. Howdy. Hi. Where's Frank? I don't know. Yeah. There's something wrong with you. Frank. You a real doctor? No. Funny thing. I didn't even know them engines hit me at first. Then my shirt, I felt it. It was all red. I didn't know till then. I didn't know. Well, uh, we'll use your wagon, put him in that, take him back to camp. Who's gonna want to give him a burial? Something coming. Yeah, about eleven dollars, I figure. Man, I can't sweeten that very much. Uh, hold it. I thought you said you were broke. I asked that loan back. It must have stuck in the bottom of the pocket. Come on, everybody, tell us something that'll make you feel better. Play? How about it? Oh yeah, I got two dollars, but it ain't gonna do any good that way. Every little bit's gonna help out. Come on, Chip. So, you raise maybe sixty dollars. Well, you may as well throw a drowning man a matchstick to hang on to as that. You suggesting we just forget about Frank's family? No, but we could make it grow into something. Well, what do you want us to do? Plant it in the ground and sprinkle it? Well, it's slow, but that's one way. No, I was thinking of betting it. There must be a poker game or two in the next town. You're always got an angle, ain't you? Look, if our luck runs hot, we can send something worthwhile to that family. And if it runs cold? Now, like I said, uh, $60 isn't going to matter much one way or another. Oh, you got a real low opinion of $60. It must mean something if it takes all of us to raise it. Gentlemen, I, uh, I didn't know Frank. But he died trying to save my life, and... Well, I'd like his family to have all the money possible. You feel like bucking that poker game? Wouldn't be any risk. Not in the kind of a game that I'm thinking about. What do you mean? Well, maybe you've heard. There's a boom up at Cokeville. They discovered silver up in the mountains, and this bunch of card sharks moved in. One of them owns a saloon. Well, they, they get some prospect during the game, or anybody with a role, and they let him win for a while till he feels pretty cocky, and then they take him right down to his long johns. Well, we ain't going to come out ahead playing a game like that. We could if we quit at the right time. Now, whoever we stake would play as long as he keeps winning. And the minute his luck turns, get out of the game. Now, that'd work. You say uh, quit at the right time. You think they're just going to let him get up and take off like that? No, it'd have to look like he's coming back. No, it's too dangerous. Unless, of course, one of you two wanted to do the winning and walking out. Well, they know me and... Play wouldn't be any good. We got to get somebody that looks like a real pigeon. Somebody that they think is dumb enough to swallow the whole bait. Mercy! I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Wishbone. I shouldn't have forgot something. Forgot what? Well, I stacked all the dirty dishes in this pan to take the stream to wash. And I forgot it was still hot. Oh, no, no. You're not thinking about mush. He can play poker, can he? Well, about the way he can cook. No matter. They'll let him win no matter what he does. Oh. No, it's too. Mr. Faber wouldn't allow it. Mr. Faber right here. I'm in charge, and I think it's a pretty good idea. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll uh, take the herd up as far as Coltville, and then four or five of us will go in town with Mushy. It's 
Scarlett, I think you better go out and uh, get a little donation from some of the other men. Uh, the bigger roll we got, the better it's gonna look. Does this sound all right to you, fellas? What do you think, Wish? All right, there's just one thing. Yeah, what's that? What's Mushy think? Mushy, we're almost there. Well, Mr. Wishbone, I don't think I can go through with it. I don't even feel like me. I sure you can. You look fine. All spruced up. What'd you have to cry so much for? Feel naked. Now, you don't think a man with money burning holes in his pockets is gonna go around looking like he needed a haircut? Well, Mr. Wishbone, they didn't know I'm no rich prospector. Now, how are they gonna know that? You got money in your pocket, and it don't take any brains to dig. You'll be all right, Mushy. Just get up from the table when you see the signal. Yeah, and get straight to that telegraph office now, understand? Maybe they won't let me. They're not even gonna know what you're up to unless you tell them. Now, you got the address. When you get out of there, just run to that telegraph office and we'll be out of there in no time. We'll be back to the herd before they know what happened. Well, all right. Thanks. Now, what's the matter? I lost the address. Look in your hat. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Come on, Mushy, perk up. You're supposed to look like you just hit it big. Well, don't I look happy? You look like you just had a tooth pulled. I wish I had, Mr. Roddy. Mushy, I'm depending on you. If you don't do this right, so help me, I'll poison you. You'll never reach Abilene. Well, I'll try my best, Mr. Wishbone. You bought the last round, Mr. Musgrove. That's all right. You fellas been so nice to me. Uh, it ain't every day a fellow makes a strike. <laughs> no, sir. Oh, Mr. Bartender? Yes. I set up a bottle and let my friends help themselves. Oh, here. This is real nice of you, Mr. Musgrove. That a bottle right down here, man. Excuse me. Some old friend. Well, Turkey Creek Johnson. Uh, you're back through here again, huh? Yep. Gotta go where the money is. No, from what I just heard, I may be selling that old medicine wagon and doing a little prospecting. See that fella up at the bar stand and treat? Just struck it rich last week without even trying. Just taking down his tent and bang, there it was. Pretty lucky. Fifty dollars a ton. And he hasn't got enough brains to yell for help if he was drowning. The man's got luck. He don't need no brains. Say, uh, you think he might like to sit in with us? You mean poker? Well, the boys and me need some fresh blood, and if he's got that kind of luck, poker might be his game. Seems to me he'd need a little more than luck to sit in with you fellas. You a good friend of his? Well, no, not a good friend. I just met him down the street in a saloon with the drovers. Well, I'll tell you what. You get him over here, and we'll give you a piece of our winnings. There's a token of appreciation. How much of a piece? Five percent. Easiest money you ever made. Well, uh, I'll get him over here. I won't guarantee you the play. You leave that up there, son. They want to meet you. Boys, meet Mr. Musgrove. Uh, Turkey Creek Johnson's my name. You just call me Turkey Creek. This here's Nani Matthews. How are you? Bill Connors and Hugo Fuller. Hi. We heard about the strike you made, and uh, the boys and me want to congratulate you. Well, Doc said you wanted me to play poker with you. Yeah, that too. Uh, we thought a little game would give us a chance to get acquainted. All right. I knew the minute I seen you, you was a man of decision. Uh, five card draw, Joker Wild, all right? Fine with me, Mr. Goosecrick. Turkey Creek. Would you like to cut? Oh, thank you.
Pass. 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 You're back, Mr. Musgrove. Oh, I'll pass. I mean, uh, five dollars. dollars and uh, if you gentlemen don't mind uh, five dollars more never seen luck like yours but I guess I never learned to stay out of a hand I'll see it well, it's straight afraid I've got a full house your deal mr. Mushgrove Oh, I say, uh, I got to send a telegram. Would you gentlemen excuse me for a few minutes? Oh, I'm sure the doc here can do it for you. Oh, no. Uh, it's business, my partner. Uh, I mean, I better do it myself. Um, hey, the doc here, he can play for me while I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, um, sure, if you trust me. Oh, I'm not worried about you, doc. If these gentlemen been so nice to me, I wouldn't want to slow up their game. Yeah, well, I'll do the best I can for you. Well, I'll be right back. My deal. address here somewhere. Oh. Oh. Hmm. That Mr. Wishbone, he's going to poison me for sure. Oh. Give me money if he wasn't coming back. He even left his hat. Why don't I just run down to the telegraph office and check? No. Bill and Nani'd be better. You just stay here. That ain't the way we gamble in this town. I... I tried, Mr. Wishbone. I know, Mush. I know. I was gonna get a piece of your winnings, wasn't I? Uh-huh. Maybe we're gonna get a piece of his, too, huh? 
Maybe you were partners with him. You owe money everywhere, Doc. Maybe you were just waiting for the big kill, huh? Look, you asked me to bring him over. I didn't ask you. You're gonna find somebody to blame. Blame yourself. Oh, you ever find out this was a trick of yours? You won't. Here. I don't want you to think I'm trying to get away with that either. He could, and it just didn't work out. We don't owe this kid anything anyway. What the heck? He knew the chances he was taking when he signed up for this drive. If any one of us, any one of us, be you tomorrow, and, and you wouldn't ask for any charity, would you? Saddle up, we're gonna move out. Take your wagon and fall in behind the chuck wagon. Come on, come on, get down, get down. Who are you? You're making some kind of mistake, aren't you? No mistake, Dr. Stimson. Oh, now look, I did sign a couple of IOUs in Bentleyville, but they're good. With me, a gambling debt is a thing of... Gambling debt? I'm not interested in your gambling debt. Hello, George. How are you? Well, Linda, what are you doing out here? I came looking for you. I had to hire a Pinkerton man, and even then, you led us quite a chase. A Pinkerton? <laughs> well, well, Dr. Stimson, on the run again? Still a gambling man, huh, George? Sam Garner? How are you? Sam! <laughs> what are you doing? You, you helping the Pinkerton man, or you taking care of Melinda? Uh, a little bit of both. Say, hey, boys, I, I want you to meet my wife, Melinda, and my friend, Sam Garner. This is uh, Rowdy, and um, Clay, How do you do? Joe, Howdy. Mushy, and Wishbone. G.W. Wishbone, ma'am. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> and uh, these well, are the... Don't just everybody just stand here. Maybe these people would like to talk without an audience. Come on. Well, Melinda, shall I tell them or will you? Sam, would you and Mr. Logan mind waiting for me in the carriage? Linda, when you just showed up out of nowhere, I, I thought my heart was going to jump right out of my chest. You changed your mind, you came back to me. I came to talk to you. You know, I tried to be what you wanted me to be, settle down in one town, but it, it felt like somebody was holding my arms behind me. I just had to break free. You love your freedom. Oh, I hoped you'd come back. To the medicine wagon? Why did you come back, Melinda? Sam wants me to marry him. So I, I came to ask you for a divorce. Sam will make you a good husband. <sighs> yes, yes, he will. He's a fine man. Melinda, listen. It wasn't all bad on the road. We had fun. Don't you remember when you got up in the wagon and sang and all the people crowded around and they loved it? And I got you something, something you've always wondered. You remember the mirror, the full length one? George, please. You really love Sam? You don't, you know you don't. I do love him. I love him in, in a different way, in a way that that's good for me. You and Sam planning on leaving soon? There's no reason to stay. I thought of asking you a favor, but uh, I guess I won't. What is it? I thought of asking you to sing again. Oh, not on the wagon. Not not a a show, a free show from a medicine wagon, but a real performance in a real theater over at Coldfield. I haven't sung in almost a year. And besides that, Sam would never... Melinda, there was a boy killed. He left a wife and two kids. I'm sorry, George. I've given up singing. I couldn't face audiences anymore. I owe this boy my life. But 
Don't you see? They're not going to pay to hear me. They've never even heard of me. They will when I get finished. Listen, Linda, please. You know me. I never worried about debts, did I? I always let the other fellow worry, but this is different. I owe this boy's family a debt, and if I don't start to repay it, I just won't be able to sleep again. All right, maybe George Simpson is changing, but I know that I feel differently now thinking about somebody else for the first time. You think that they really would pay to hear me sing? Even if they didn't like music, they would pay just to look at you. <laughs> well, I gotta get the boys busy on this. We gotta advertise. We'll make posters and a banner. We'll make a banner. Ready? Just like old times, Melinda, the day before the performance. Are you as excited as I am? Pleasantly. I still don't approve of this whole idea. It'll be all right, Sam. Of course it will. Now, come along. I want you to see the hall where you're going to sing. Melinda knows what small town halls look like. But this one's different. It's in the back of the saloon. Saloon? You'll have a whole saloon full of people staring at her. And telling their friends about her. Posters are fine, but when you're advertising Melinda, one glimpse is worth a thousand words. What are you interested in selling? The way Melinda looks or the way she sings? A little of both. Let's go, Melinda. Gentlemen, place your bets. Five thousand on the credit. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Turkey Creek, Miss Jenny Lynn, Mr. Sam Garner. This is the most illustrious citizen of Coltville, the proprietor of this splendid establishment and a businessman of extraordinary daring. What he's trying to tell you, ma'am, is that I'm a gambler and there's nothing very illustrious about that except that I'm in the presence of the great Jenny Lynn. <laughs> sure is nice of you to sing here for us after you've been singing in all them fancy places. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Uh... Turkey Creek Johnson. How come you know anyone as famous as Miss Lynn? Well, in the old days, I used to accompany her, and since she's traveling without an accompanist, she gave me that privilege for this one concert. We just dropped by to look at the hall. Well, you play one sour note, and you got me to answer to. I'll buy the first two tickets. One hundred dollars. That's for luck, ma'am. Don't you sell none for less. These fellows here can afford it. Most of them. Not a one excepting standing room, of course, which is ten dollars. George. This is without a doubt the cheapest. Now, Melinda, wait a minute. It's not finished yet. I got the drovers out. Melinda is not talking about the stage. How could you tell them in there that I was Jenny Lind? Shh. Believe me, Melinda. All anybody in this town knows about Jenny Lind is that she's a beautiful woman who sings like a nightingale. And you cannot deny that you fit both those descriptions. It's one thing to ask Melinda to help out a widow and some orphans. It's quite another to ask her to be a fraud, Jenny Lind. Well, I almost believed you this time. I really did. You can still believe me. Every penny is going to Frank Miller's family. With Melinda Stimson, it would have been pennies. But with Jenny Lynn, it's going to be a fortune. Didn't you hear Turkey Creek set the admission prize $50 a seat? Why, I'll bet you the real Jenny Lynn never drew that kind of money. And I'll bet you if we ever meet the real Jenny Lynn, she'd be the first one to agree. Why, she'd even buy that ticket for $50. Oh, George, you're impossible. Even supposing it was not dishonest, it's dangerous. Do you realize Jenny Lynn's picture was in the last Harper's? Nobody in this town reads Harper's. As a matter of fact, very few people in this town can read. Melinda's traveled up and down this whole part of the country with you. Yes. Yes, and just suppose that one of them remembers me as the girl in your pitch wagon. That was a long time ago. Too long. Melinda, you never used to worry about things like this. Do you remember the sheriff that we told you were from the temperance union out to test my elixir? <laughs> he was gullible even for a sheriff. Well, he would have believed it if you told him you were the Queen of Sheba. And I remember that gambler who had a collection of your IOUs. Remember he showed up on the same stagecoach? You got so scared you jumped and got your coat caught in the door? He's trying to trick you. Melinda, please. Just this once. Well, maybe Jenny Lynn would understand. And forgive. Just this once. Oh. 
put it down there anyway. Well, hello, Sam. We're going to rehearse in here, I hope you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Oh, just a minute, sir. A little something for your trouble. A couple of tickets for the show tonight. Where's Melinda? Oh, she'll be back in a minute. She went to the seamstress. Oh. Has it occurred to you, George, that you might have a better chance if you put up an honest fight? What are you talking about? Why did you ask Melinda to do this performance with you? Well, you know, Sam, $11 in a bedroll isn't going to be much help to a drover's family. No, George, that's just part of it. The real reason was, give Melinda a taste of the old life and she'd never go back. You'd have her. Melinda can't be forced to do anything she doesn't want to do. I love her, George. I love her very much. I believe you do. If you want to fight for her, if you want to fight me, fine. But at least fight fair. I know I'm second choice. And if you cared enough about her to give her what I'm offering, she'd probably choose you. Melinda knows what kind of a man I am. She knows what I can give her. What can you give? A lot of rainbows to chase? Not what she really wants. What do you think she really wants? A woman like Melinda has a right to have a real life, to have children and a home that isn't on wheels, and a husband who isn't always one jump ahead of the sheriff. Did you see how Melinda looked when she swept into that saloon? She was radiant, flush with life. That's the real Melinda, not the one you have in mind. Mr. Wishbone says the house is all sold out. Thanks to Miss Jenny Lynn? You haven't eaten. I'll order you something. Oh, thank you. No, I'm not hungry. Well, should we start rehearsing? Well, you know all the songs. I thought we'd run over them just for fun. Well, which one will we do first? How about uh, Beautiful Dreamer? All right. Uh, I think I'll go down and take a walk. Why don't you stay, Sam? No, you'll be better off alone. All right. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Well, that's quite a bundle. Looks like you got as much as the rest of them. Yeah, that's the easiest money I ever made. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Garner. How's this look to you? That's fine, fine. Say, where's the owner of this wagon? Well, he's rehearsing for the concert tonight. Well, I, I got a mirror he bought. Mirror? What's he want with a mirror? He hasn't got a dressing room. Hey, it's for his wagon. I understand there's a lady traveling with him. Well, put it in the wagon if you've been paid. George. You know you still love me. I think you better go. Well, is it true or isn't it? I don't know. It is. You know it is. You didn't come out here to ask for a divorce. Yes, I did. No, you're right, I didn't. And Sam knows it. I came out here to make one last try to get you to come back home to Chicago. Forget about Chicago. There are brand new towns springing up all over. New faces, new people. We'll see California, the Pacific. I can't do that to Sam. It'd be much more cruel to marry him. Now look, I'll bring the wagon around after the show and we'll get in and head west. Mrs. Stimson. out there. I hope I night and yell won't keep him waiting too long. Don't worry, I sent wish for one for her. There's one thing that bothers me. What's that? Letting all those folks out there think she is who she ain't. <sighs> just cheating cheaters. If they hadn't spent that money on those tickets, they'd have just lost it on Turkey Creek's gambling tables. We're just taking his money, and you gotta admit he owes it to us after stealing much she's winning. Well, now that makes me feel better. Well, not for long it won't. Pretty soon none of us are gonna feel good. What's the matter? Where's Melinda? She took off of that Garner fellow about a half an hour ago. I just saw the hotel clerk. She's headed for the stage connection to the east in a rented rig. It can't be. Well, the hotel room's empty. The trunk and everything's gone. Did you have a fight with her or something? No. No, nothing like that. Well, what are we going to do about all those people out there? And Turkey Creek Johnson and his hired guns. Well, we got their money. We can always return it. 
We don't still have that money. That's gone. Gone where? We sent it off to Frank's family to make sure they got it this time. Look, she's only been gone in about a half an hour. If you think you can stall those people out there, I'll go after her. No. No, she obviously doesn't want to sing here. I don't care what she wants. I'll drag her back if I have to. Do me a favor, will you, Clay? Yeah? Hurry. You bet. Trouble with a capital T. All right, where is she? Uh, Miss Jenny Lynn? Well, you understand about great artists. They, they're often late. As a matter of fact, she once kept the Queen of England waiting a half hour. I ran out on her? Uh, no, oh no. A true artist never runs out on an audience. Then you tell me why she took a buggy to travel from the hotel next door to here. Oh, that? Mm-hmm. Well, the great singers, you know, they got to have their lungs full of good fresh air. Isn't that right, Doc? You tell him. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, tension. Uh, stage fright. Uh, stale air. Uh, if you knew Jenny Lynn, you'd realize that every night before a concert, she always takes a brisk walk. In a buggy. Yes. Uh, she, she needs air in her lungs, just as Mr. Wishbone said. Now, you know, Turkey, we have a very dusty town here, and uh, if she went walking, she ruin her dainty shoes. She better not keep me waiting any longer than she kept the queen. Now, I'm going to tell you, if she don't show, you're not only going to return everybody their money, but you're going to make up for my losses. What losses? The winnings I'm not winning out there while me and my customers are sitting in here wasting our time. Know your wife? You think she's gonna come back? Well, anybody like to step out and tell that crowd they're not gonna see a performance? Plus, the interesting fact they're not gonna get their money back either. I have confidence in Clay. If we could just stall him a little, maybe you could uh, play something on the organ, huh, Doc? All right, draw the curtain. Wishbone, introduce me. Oh, I'm not accustomed to public speaking. Come on, you'll use up time. Introduce the first number of this gala performance, Dr. George Stimson at the organ. Oh, that crowd's building up a bad mood. I did. I told her. Well, you better tell her something else, mister. Look, ma'am, your husband, they're, they're all trying to stall all those people back there. Now, if you don't get back, there's going to be a mass lynching. Why'd you do it, Sam? I was afraid I'd lose you if you stayed. And you could just leave them with the crowd. I love you, Melinda. I'm sorry. Driver, turn around. Thank you. They've had just about all of me they're going to take. Robbie, why don't you go out and sing? 
Yeah. You lost your mind or something? I can't, I can't sing to him. Well, yeah, just sing like you do to the beeves. That's good enough. Look, boys, those are cattle. These are people out here, and they got guns. Let me ask you something. How many tickets did you sell to this affair? About $1,500 worth, I suppose. Then you haven't got much choice. They're not going to let you out of town roll anyway. You know the song, uh, The Unsung? Just sing it, I'll follow. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jenny Land. Well, she, uh, she asked that I uh, sing one of her all-time favorite type songs. <laughs> There's a place my heart's longing to be Beyond the sun, over the mountain There's a face my eyes hunger to see The long, long road seems like an endless thing Somewhere, someplace, there is a home Beyond the sun, over the mountain, there are lonely arms waiting for me. I'm always doing fine. Yeah. Waiting for me. Joe, it's your turn. Me? Yeah, uh, you can do some rope tricks. Get his rope, boys. Well, they see roping every day. Maybe some of them can rope as good as me. Oh, come on now, go on. Oh. Oh. We got a couple of rope tricks here I thought might be entertaining while we we're waiting for Miss Lynn. About what? I don't have anything to say. Well, look, we're all going to be saying our prayers if you don't find something to talk about. Here, here's some funny jokes in my almanac. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting, I'd like to tell you a couple of funny stories I heard the other day. It's really a funny story. Put the gun down. You'll need both of those hands to applaud. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Miss Jenny Lynn. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee.
Take it easy. George. Sorry, you got to be dragged back. I came back on my own. Sam lied to me. He said that someone had recognized me and that you and the drovers had run away. Sam said that? And I was furious with you for not coming to me and just leaving like that. But I thought... Oh, Melinda, I thought you had changed your mind about me. I've never changed my mind about you, George. I almost did. Well, you're back now. Come on. We'll... No, you don't understand. I almost decided to go away with you. I was tempted, but I changed my mind. You see, you don't really need me. And Sam does. But do you need Sam? I think so. Yours is the big dream. But there are little dreams, and they're just as important. You've always offered me a ride on the comet. But Sam offers me solid ground. You understand, don't you? Good luck, George. I want to catch Sam before he leaves town. Too bad. Yep. Too bad about something else, too. I had all these people here. I had them. Think of how many bottles of my golden remedy I could have sold. Wait a minute. I'm a big man in this town now. I accompanied the great Jenny Lynn. Tomorrow, I'm gonna set up my wagon out in the street. And you just watch. I'll get him. Tell you what I'm gonna do, folks. The first five bottles sold here today, I'm gonna give away to you absolutely free another bottle of my gold. Get him up, move him out. Sourdough. Well, what do I do with this pot? Well, I can make a suggestion. Yes, sir? Wear it for a bonnet. What about the stew? Feed it to the gophers. Do you have any some gophers in mind? I'll stand pat. Ah, man, 20 bottles of whiskey. Full or empty? Full. I'll see you and raise you 50 head of horses. <laughs> Live or dead? Broom tails. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call both of you and bet you my ranch in Kansas. Jim, you ain't got a ranch in Kansas. You ain't got no 20 bottles of whiskey. No more than Narbo here has 50 head of horses. Now, what are you going to do? I'm going to bet. Five cents. Five cents? Yeah, five cents. Clay, I think you're bluffing. Scared us out. <laughs> Weather coming up. Sounds like a storm someplace. Senor Clay, mm -hmm. there is a saying I have heard. Cards are the devil's book. You read cards, Jesus? A little. Oh, well, would you read some for me? Si, senor. Take two cards. Oh, no, this deck's pretty old. I'd, I'd cheat. Um, let me try another way. One that'll keep me honest, huh? What? 
You got a real fast draw and a good aim. But people have been fired for shooting a night camp. The Ace of Spades. It stands for death. Who's death, Aces? I will look at the other card. Jack of Clubs. Well, what does that mean? He does not name the one who is to die. The knave is a wanderer. He brings death with him. Senior death is right on time. Anything I can do for you? I said anything I can do for you. He can't speak and he can't hear? He kept mute. What's the matter with you, Jesus? You look like you're seeing a ghost. When death sends a messenger, he does not listen, for that might soften his heart. He does not speak, for he does not wish to give hope. Like somebody wants Rowdy. Maybe you should not tell this man where Rowdy is. Why not? Because when the messenger of death comes, he comes on the wings of the wind. The sound of his coming is like the sound of thunder. The messenger sure took off in a hurry. Or was taken. Maybe I ought to go into town. What for? Well, uh, Rowdy probably got himself in some kind of trouble. Well, he can mighty well get himself out of it. He's done it before. Yeah, maybe, but uh, I don't like the people that come looking for well, you just stay right here. I'm the boss now. Deal the cards. Uh, I sure am glad to see you, mister. Uh, how are you? Well, uh, I've got a favor to ask. Would you mind searching me? What would I want to be doing a thing like that for? Well, I was on my way to my ranch. And I stopped to give some Jasper a ride. Well, the first thing I know, he pulled a gun on me. Ordered me out of the wagon and then drove off. Well, they must have wanted your wagon pretty bad, huh? Yeah. Uh, which way are you heading? Uh, south, about 20 miles. You'll be passing me ranch. Now, you want to make sure that I haven't got a gun on me. Uh, you wouldn't want to happen to you what happened to me. But I ain't too worried about that, mister. Go ahead. Go on, search me. All right. Yeah, no gun. Come on, come aboard. Oh, uh, thank you. And may the Lord chief and bless you. my mother. <laughs> Don't hail too much in Texas. My mother wasn't a Texas woman. I wish she was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a day late already. I can just see Mr. Favor when I tell him that we were right who was fixing this wagon uh, was going to have a baby, and that's the reason I was held up and down. Hmm. Make it the wheelwright's wife, and he might believe you. <laughs> he wouldn't believe me if I had a stack of witnesses as high as cottonwoods. He wouldn't believe them either. Well, under the circumstances, Circumstances. It's grateful I am to you that you offered to give me a ride back to my ranch. Well, it's on the way. Well, it ain't as good as a ranch, but these trees will shelter us some. I'll see you in the morning. Sure, Mr. Yates. In the morning.
Hello? Hello? Hello, is anybody in here? Uh, you better, uh, better get your breakfast, um, uh, muffins are getting cold. Anybody up there? him in. I can't fool all of Mackie. Are you sure you did the right thing, Mr. Mackie? Maybe he come here to help us. He looked real nice. He was wearing a gun. Why didn't you stay in the bedroom? I get lonesome in there. We've acted without any proof. We ain't in the courtroom now, Judge. But the young man seemed to be quite inoffensive, Mr. Wells. Anybody that carries a gun when I haven't got one, Judge, offends me. Perhaps you're right. Shh. He's trying to shoot his way out. Those were rifle shots. They came from outside. Oh, gee, I hope they didn't hit him. Franny. But at least that proves that he's not one of them. The young lady is right. Mr. Mackey, will you unlock the door? Could be another of their tricks. We're at their mercy anyway. If they wanted to come inside and show themselves, we couldn't have stopped them. You know, they... they needn't have staged such an elaborate farce. We've got somebody locked up. We ought to keep them locked up. Because we're locked up, too, Mr. Wells. What's the big idea, huh? You may as well put the gun away, young man. None of us is armed, nor have we any intention of harming you. Lock me in. I did. The name is Mackey. Age indeterminate, thirst unquenchable. Mr. Mackey locked the door, but he also unlocked it. 
I'm Miss Armstrong. I'm Freddie Wells. This is my husband, Bert. My name is Thomas Larkins. This is George Ash. And now, who are you? My name's Roddy Yates. I'm a drover. Just what is the drover doing here? Looking for a few horses that were stolen from me. When did this happen, Mr. Yates? Last night. In that case, we can all alibi each other. We were all here last night, as we have been for several days. Yeah, and you can believe him when it comes to alibis. He's a judge. The kind of judge that I come up before every other week or so. <laughs> I'm retired now, Mr. Mackey. What are you people, uh, what are you doing all together here? We don't know. At least none of us admits he knows. I don't get it. A uh, place like this out in the middle of nowhere. Well, if you think we like it here. Why don't you get out? You tried that, didn't you, Mr. Yates? You don't, you don't know who's keeping you prisoner here? We don't know. At least most of us don't know. One of us perhaps does. Well, breakfast will be getting cold. Shall we go down? Yeah, well, there's got to be a way out of this place. Well, best ham and eggs I've had in a long time. Well, thank you, son. They keep a well-stocked larder anyway. Tell me, Mrs. Armstrong, just how'd you get in here? Well, I'm a nurse, and I got a message there was a man sick here. So I hired a buggy to bring me out, and I sent the buggy back. Came up to the front door, and... Well, there are people here, but none of them sick. No one seems to know how long we're to be kept here. Bert and me was on a stagecoach going south to San Antonio. Two men held up the stage. They didn't take nothing except Bert and me. They brought us here. Do you look at them? Uh, what were the, what the men look like? They was masked. One was tall and thin, the other was tall and fat. Um, that was mean whoever brought you here wanted you and your husband here the same time that Mrs. Armstrong was here. What about this fella, uh, Mackie, that's here? Why not ask Mackie yourself, young man? <laughs> All right, Mackie, I'll ask you. Tell me, how'd you get here? Well, I wish I knew. I was having my second bottle in the Kinston Saloon and Gambling Parlor. One, I, uh, if you'll excuse the expression, I passed out. Not something that usually happens when I reach the second bottle. And that's your whole story? No. When I woke up, my hangover was as usual, but my surroundings were not. Somebody gone to a great deal of trouble to bring me here. Now, you, I believe, said that you strayed in here looking for your horses? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Well, there's a stable out in back. You can see it from the kitchen if you're careful. Come on. Don't do it. Well, Judge, how'd you get here? Well, I was on my way home to Boston in my own rig. Boston, civilization, culture. The conversation about books. The latest poem of William Cullen Bryant. The opera, perhaps. Oh, blast it! I've earned it by all these years in this wilderness. Oh, it seems to me, Judge, you've earned a place in this house. How? Why? Well, you're here. Well, you people were brought here. I... I stumbled in here by accident. There are always two men with rifles outside. Good luck, young man. Help me with the dishes, dear. I ain't accustomed to that sort of thing. I'm an artist. You are an artist, and I am a nurse, and we are going to do the dishes. Well, being held captive don't seem to bother you too much, does it, Mikey? <laughs> Mr. Yates, most people are unhappy when they're away from their custom places, be it their, their homes or their stores or whatever. But home for old Mackey is where the bottle is. Yeah. Hey, Judge, uh, what about him? Well, he's a man of few words, and they're not always well-chosen words. Outside the fact his name is George Ash and that he was the first one here, we... We know nothing about him. What are you two whispering about? Where's my wife? 
Except for the Mrs. Armstrong with the dishes. I want you to stay away from her. Look, Mr. Wells. My job's with a herd on the Chisholm Trail, and that don't take me near anybody's wife. You ain't with a herd on the Chisholm now. I don't need you to tell me that. You say there's a stable out back? Yeah, I did. If uh, I go back to my outfit and bring back half the drovers, uh, if that's providing I can get out of here, I can set you people free. Well, none of us will oppose your leaving, Mr. Yates. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Now you might have a chance. There we are. Look at all this food. Well-stocked shelves, huh? Plenty for lot, I suppose. It keeps the others pretty happy. Sometimes I wish that I were more interested in food. Where does this uh, all come from, anyway? Oh, a tall, thin man brings his supplies every morning. A tall, thin man with a rifle. He don't say nothing. Don't even answer when you talk to him. My dear, he's a deaf mute. Well, the least he could say is good morning. You know, I'll bet he can't talk. Uh, yeah, well, that's probably why he's the jailer. Is this the door, uh... Say so leads out the stable? Yeah, it's right out there. But it isn't locked, but then neither's the front one. I'd give some thought to it before I walked out there. Are you trying to discourage me? No, 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 no. You go right ahead. After all, how long can the supply of liquor here last? Wait a minute. Good luck. Thanks. That spirits of ammonia, strong enough to wake the dead. Although I don't know how long it keeps them away. How'd they get bacon here? The tall thin one brought you in the front door, dropped you, and then went out again. Funny thing, they let you get out as far as the stable. What's so funny about that? Maybe they want to have a little talk with you. All I know is when I got in that stable, somebody hit me on the head. We've only your word for that. Like to feel the lump back there? None of us have been permitted to even touch these curtains. And yet they let you go out of the house. You returned, of course. But there's still a question to be answered. Yeah, well, you better ask the boys out there with the rifles. You've still got a gun. Why didn't they take it from you? No idea. The reason could be because you're in with them. I ain't in with nobody. That being the case, you won't mind turning it over to me. Yeah, I'd mind. You're turning over that gun. Mind or not? We've got more than guns to worry about. Yeah, what's that? You come and see. Bit of it. And so the poor doggy had none.
you. Mr. Favor said nobody was to go after Rowdy. He meant it. Oh, that was just talk. Mr. Favor said any kind of trouble Rowdy got into, he got into it by himself. He can get out of it by himself. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right, Joe. That is kind of foolish of me to go helping Rowdy, especially since I'm after his job. I'd say it's kind of foolish. Yeah, real dumb, considering that my chances are a lot better when he's gone. You know, I got one problem, though. I want to take his job away from him while he's here, rather than when he's lost and gone somewhere. <laughs> to ration it very carefully. Oh, for how long? I don't have to count me in on the water ration. We were all brought here, kept prisoner here, and now it appears we're going to be starved to death. We'll die of thirst long before we starve. Bert! Oh, shut up. Well, I got here by accident, but uh, it seems to me there'd be a reason why the rest of you all wound up here. But what reason? I don't know, but maybe if you got together and uh, compared notes, you might come up with an answer. And maybe that answer might just uh, tell us how we're going to get out of this mess. I think maybe we ought to try. Yeah, you would. Well, we'll all be more comfortable in the parlor. Besides, no one will have to guard the water. May I have the honor, ma'am? I'm very anxious to explore Mr. Gates' theory. Because of my seniority, for no other reason, I'll take the chair. Mrs. Armstrong, you're a nurse. Now, where has your work taken you? I was born in Texas. My husband fought with the Confederate Army, and then after he was killed at the Battle of Vicksburg, I became a nurse. I've never been out of Texas in my life. Thank you, Mrs. Armstrong. And uh, what about you, Mr. Mackey? I don't know any of you. I'm beginning to wish I'd never seen any of you. I do know every bar between Abilene and the Mexican border. Had money once. Bartenders have it all now. That's the end of my story. Mr. and Mrs. Wells? We're, we're entertainers. Burton Flenny. Comic impersonations, popular songs, and funny sayings. For example, I remember one time when I was riding through the sand hills just outside of El Paso. Well, that must have been right nice for you. Why, it wasn't nice at all. The wind had been blowing up sandstorms for three days. And remember, this here was in Texas. What happened then? Well, as I was riding along, I see a man's hat lying on top of a sand dune. So I ride over to it, get off, pick it up. What did you find? Found there was a man's head in it. Heavens, how dreadful. So I scratched the sand out of his eyes, ears, and mouth with my fingers. I figured the first thing he'd say would be, thank you. What did he say? He said, get a shovel. I'm on horseback. <laughs> <clears throat> they, they laugh a lot at that one down in the southern part of Texas. Friendly does impersonations. I, I don't suppose any of you would be interested in seeing her do it, an impersonation. Have you done most of your entertaining in Texas, Mr. Wells? We, we've done it all over. West, east. And what about you, Mr. Ash? Where I've been and where I'm going is nobody's business. Are you sure you're going anywhere? I've been a lot of places, Judge. But I don't know anybody who would want to coop me up in a house and starve me to death. You have no enemies? I've got a lot of enemies. But they'd all come after me with guns. I was a judge in northern Texas for 24 years. I was born in Boston and educated at Harvard. I'm afraid we, we don't have anything in common. Now, Mr. Yates, we know that you're a cattle drover. Can you add anything? Nothing. Well, I see no point in waiting up for dinner. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bert? Yeah, yeah. Good night, everyone. Pleasant dreams. 
Well, I've asked you gentlemen to join me in a drink, but... I don't... I wouldn't want to be any one of us, but least of all would I like to be that one. You go on to the bedroom, don't worry, man. You know my aversion to water. I'll be right on guard here if anybody decides to take a drink during the night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Night. Who's your boss? Mrs. Armstrong? Judge Larkin and Mackey? Thanks for the visit. I see you're not wearing your knife, Mr. Yates. Yeah, I don't know if it's a surprise to anyone, but that deaf mute paid me a visit last night. Oh? That's right. Oh, why wake you, Mr. Yates? You're sorry, ain't you, Franny? Sorry? About what? Marrying me. I don't amount to much. The act don't amount to much. It's good enough. I've seen the way you've been looking at that drover. That don't mean a thing. Not to him. Maybe not even to you. But me? I'd give my life if you once look at me like that. Offering your life right now don't mean very much. But just to sit here. Look. It's daytime outside. There's light. Why should we sit and hide in here behind drawn curtains, breathing stale air? Hmm. Don't touch that shade. I'll show you who's afraid. I didn't hit the bone, but I'll need water. Very painful. The water you're going to use on him is all the water we got left to drink. He's your husband, ma'am. If he got himself shot trying to help us or even trying to escape, I might feel sorry for him. But what he done was stupid, because he's jealous. Jealous of every man who ain't afraid of his own shadow. How you feeling, Mackie? Well, I still have a couple of drinks left. I only have one drink left. I'm in the livelier few. I think I'll share Mr. Mackey's last drink. Have you ever been in jail, Mr. Yates? Yeah, a few times. It's a prisoner of war. Then this is your first time in condemned row. I see you've been at my liquor, Mr. Yates. I've been at your bottle, Mackey, but there ain't no liquor in it. It's just like watered-down coffee to me. In that case, there's no point in pretending any further, is there?
Mr. Mackey, what do you want of us? Your lives. I'm afraid I've lied to all of you. My name isn't really Mackey at all. It's John W. McKinnon. Does that suggest anything to any of you? Perhaps I'd better refresh your memories. Kylo! Put it down the table there. Go on back outside. My orders are the same. Anyone coming out of the house is to be shot down. That's what you're paying me for. I had a son once. His name was Edward J. McKinnon. Had he lived, he'd be 26 years old. He died when he was 19. Well, what's that have to do with us here? Don't be impatient, Mr. Yates. As I said, he died when he was 19. I had great plans for him. I was wealthy, powerful. He could have become my successor. Extended my power, he'd have been a prince. What is your power, Mr. McKinnon? Ownership. I own stocks in every railroad that spans this country. I own shares in every mining enterprise from the silver mines of the south to the copper mines of the north. All these would have gone to my son. But as I said, he died when he was 19. What, do you think one of us here killed him? All of you killed him. I'll admit it wouldn't have been possible if he hadn't been the romantic young fool that he was. He wanted thrills and excitement. Wasn't interested in power, so he ran away. I sent men after him to bring him back. That was seven years ago. You're the ones who helped him escape my men. That was my son, Edward. Now do you remember? I never saw the kid before. Like both bullets hit him. And he's the first to go. The rest of you will follow in due time. What did he do to your son? Let's proceed in order, shall we, Mr. Yates? It begins with you. I told you I never saw the kid before. Seven years ago, you were in the town of Yuma in the Arizona Territory. Yeah, that's right. I was a prisoner of war there. One particular evening, you were in the Silver Dollar Saloon in Yuma. Probably was. So what? You offered a young man a drink. What's so unusual about that, huh? While he was drinking with you, three of my men entered that saloon. They wanted to bring him back to me. You interfered. Wait a minute. I still don't recognize the face, but I remember there was a brawl that night, yeah. Three uh, Jaspers came in, tried to jump a kid I was having a drink with. You interfered? Yeah, I would do it again, too, Anytime three men jump one. You helped my son escape. He ran out of that saloon and into the night. That's right, I, I never saw him after that. Mrs. Wells, you were the next one to see him. He was just a kid, and so scared. You worked in that saloon, didn't you? Yeah, I worked in that saloon. You hid my son from the men who sought him. The men who were going to bring him back to me. I just gave him a place to hide out for a night. I feel sorry for your husband. What are you sorry for me for? You married very unwisely. I'm not discussing your wife's character. I am discussing her role in the death of my son. In marrying her, you assumed a share in her fate. That man lying dead out there, George Ash, a criminal with a long record. He persuaded my son to join him in a bank robbery. During the holdup, the night watchman was killed. I don't know whose finger pulled the trigger that killed him. I don't care. My son was wounded during that holdup. He sought shelter from a Mrs. Armstrong. He came to me. You nursed him back to health. I'm a nurse. And then you turned him over to the sheriff. When I found out he was wanted for murder. You turned him over to the sheriff. He was using the name of Edward Walsh. He was tried before me, found guilty, and I pronounced sentence on him. Death by hanging. Death by hanging. It took years to get you all together here. Now I'm going to give you the justice that you deserve. You, you, you're insane. The kid told me his mother died when he was born. He said in all his life nobody had ever showed him any tenderness. Your son told me about you, Mr. Mackey. About a father who wasn't interested in his son, but in an instrument for increasing his power. 
The one thing he couldn't tell me about was his father's love for him. I visited your son in his cell, Mr. McKinnon, while he was waiting for the hangman. He prayed for the salvation of his father's soul. He blamed you alone for his tragic situation. Lies! That's a rotten, sniveling lie! So you're trying to save your own miserable hides. But it's no use. George Ash was the first to go. Who'll be the second? <laughs> I think I'll let you decide that among yourselves. <laughs> yes, I'll enjoy that. Till tonight. Where do you suppose he could be? You want to go look for him? But we're not obeying instructions. We haven't chosen his next victim. Let him do it himself. If we don't give him a name, he may kill all of us. General idea anyway, ain't it? Oh, I got the general idea. If you hadn't helped his son escape, he may never have got to Franny or Mrs. Armstrong, and the judge wouldn't have had to sentence him to death. I say you ought to be the first one. Ain't I right, Judge? If one must, Mr. Yates has my vote. That ain't fair. I suppose you'd like it if I went first. No. But I'd like it if you offered to go first. Doesn't seem to me that it makes any difference who dies tonight. He's going to try and kill us all anyway. We can pray, Mr. Yates, that a prairie fire will drive Mr. McKinnon and his men away. Or that a sudden change of heart. <laughs> Recognize me, son? I'm the United States Cavalry riding to the rescue. Oh, he has a quite a bruise here. You alone? I've never been loner in my life. You just made about the dumbest mistake you ever made in your life. Mm -hmm. You'll probably die here with the rest of us. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do about it. We're in the hands of a madman. He'll listen to no one. I wonder about that. Why not light more lamps? The atmosphere needn't be so funereal. Or perhaps it should be. The newcomer, it's unfortunate that you blundered in at a time like this. Well, have you chosen yet? If you're delicate about seeing someone killed in front of your eyes, you needn't worry. The person of your choice will merely be invited to step out the front door. You can uh, still change your mind, you know. Why should I? As far as you're concerned, I'm the lord of life and death. Primarily of death. Nothing alive can stop me. What about something dead? The dead have their own affairs to look after. I think there's something here you ought to uh, see, Mr. McKinnon. No, I mean, uh, you're looking the wrong way. Over there. This is a dream. A delusion. I will not be mocked by a delusion! Did you really think you could kill me again, Father? I never killed you, Edward! Not with a bullet, Father. Or with a rope or a knife. But you killed me. No! I have come back, Father. Because I'm your father. But you know I always wished you well. I have come back because I hate you. I hated you in life, in death. My hate no. will not let me rest. I hate you now. No!
Oh, honey. You were just great. Franny. Franny. Have you a handkerchief? Franny. You all right? Oh, yeah. oh, you're lucky. He just grazed you. It ain't bad. Bird, honest. Are you sure? <laughs> you had me real worried. That Mackie. I... Oh, him. <laughs> Honey, you know I could always handle a heckler. Oh, uh, you. <laughs> I've never seen such a hair bone. Why, I think up a good line. She's got to think up a better one. I work out a slick piece of business. She can't rest until she's done the same. What? I can't even get shot without she has to talk. <laughs> Time I get them to the law and get back to the herd, I'll have been gone longer than a week. They were gonna kill me. Or fire you. Like that, wouldn't it? <laughs> Look, if he's gonna fire you, he's got to fire me right along with you. Oh, thanks. My left elbow's been aching all morning. Something in the wind, I can feel it. It's ducks, look at him. Those aren't ducks, Mussy, they're geese. Can't be geese, they don't get together this time of the year. Well, they're geese, can't you hear them honking? Look at them swarm. I didn't know them, though. Look, they're running from something. Twister. Mr. Favor! Man, right down us. That is the herd bunched up. We've had it. Scatter them. That's the word. Anybody hurt? Not yet, but I ate so much dust, I'm due for a bellyache. It's a good thing you scattered him. The storm would have ripped right through the middle. It'll be a week gathering him up. 
You can tally up our losses then. Uh, you know what's got to be done. Find yourselves a horse. Get to it. Well, what are you doing now? I'm looking for my hat. Well, it's on the way to Kansas. Come on and help me, or you'll be looking for a job. Well, you know, I think Mr. Faber ought to settle for what we rounded up and get this herd of moving. Well, still a hundred short, though. With that 40 dead, that's kind of a stiff loss. Yeah, but we've been after it for three days now, and time's going to start costing him nothing but money. Well, that's our brand, all right. It's the ride with the total loss after all. Hey, mister! Would you give me a lift down? Thanks, Jim. You sure ain't no squirrel. What are you doing up there, boy? The cows chase me. Cows chase me. Your turn, Jim. Come on. Cows are shooting me. Well, we're a lot meaner. You'll be all right now. Hey! Can I come down, too? Oh, boy. Ah. Any more around here like you? Sure, over there. Some sort of an old-timey tree climbing convention? Oh, no. We live there. Mr. Smithers told us to watch the cows. He sent Johnny and Pedro out to see if there's any more. Oh, well, that's real nice of Mr. Smithers. Uh, we just came to get the cows. Well, if you want to buy them, you'll have to talk to Mr. Smithers. I don't know what he sold the others for. Sold so the others? I mean, he's been selling this beef here? You never seen nothing like it, mister. Ever since that tornado, they've been coming out of the hills from every which direction. Oh, boy. Well, you want to flip to see who goes back? Oh, no. You're the ramrod. That's your job. You go get it. Me now, I'll just stay here at the house and keep an eye on these little cutters. Gentlemen, Edgar Allen Smithers at your service. Your favor, Roddy Yates, Jim Quince. Oh, cattlemen, I can see. Oh, I admire you. It must be a very challenging life, rounding up all those wild cows and driving them clean across the continent. Well, they all ain't exactly wild, Mr. Smithers. Now, your daughter Betsy was telling me that... No, 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 no. no not my daughter, my niece. As for the others, I'm afraid I can't identify the antecedents. They're orphans. This is an orphanage, huh? Well, I'm afraid it doesn't look like much, but 
As I always say, it's what's inside that counts. Oh, I must admit that the hand of Providence does man the helm of our ship of life sometimes. Mrs. Smithers! It fits! It fits me perfect! Perfectly! Now, you go inside. There's some more packages for you. As I was saying, Providence. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. Now, you take that tornado last week. Oh, we took it all right. Oh, why, well, I know it must have brought havoc for some. But to those whose ship was foundering on the pinnacle of privation, well, indeed, sir, it was truly a blessing. Sort of like cows from heaven, huh? That's a fitting way of putting it. Very fitting way indeed. You know, this is just like Christmas to those children. Christmas that's long overdue. And all because of money derived from the sale of a few stray cows. Oh, excuse me. Well, now, maybe we can have Betsy let them down a little bit, or, or we can cut them off right at the knees. Me dads are for girls. Oh. Well, now, Kevin, you have two alternatives. Either we'll let your hair grow, <laughs> or, or you can run inside and change your pants, because we can have them exchanged. <laughs> Besides from the presents, I had enough money left over to buy some furniture, chairs, and beds. $300 can go a long, long way. $300? That's what you sold the beef for. Yes, indeedy. Mr. Randolph wanted to pay $2 a head, but uh, I stuck to three. And by sheer tenacity, I got it. Sheer tenacity. Oh, you drive a hard bargain. Exactly who is this Mr. Randolph? Oh, he runs the bank in Cedar Springs. Oh, now, look, if you intend to do business with him, be very careful. He is a wily one. Oh, I sort of gathered that already. Tell me, uh, did he ask for a bill of sale or papers of ownership? Oh, well, I signed a lot of papers, transferals and the like. Routine, I guess, for business. We better catch up this fellow before he sells him to somebody else, huh? Well, don't let him hike the price beyond five. You know what he paid for them. Thanks a lot for telling us. You've been a real big help. Oh, uh, uh, and incidentally, those, uh, the cows over here in the meadow, uh, would you like to buy them? I was going to keep a few around, but they're a little too rambunctious for the children. Uh, yeah, look, how about, uh, $30? Does that sound fair? Oh, that... Uh, that is more than fair. That is very generous. Oh, gee, thank you very much. I think nothing of it. Uh, uh, you want me to sign a receipt or anything? Who needs ownership papers? Uh -huh. Mr. Smithers! Come and look at Mary. She's just beautiful. Oh, coming, coming. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Nice doing business with you. Pleasure, Mr. Faber, Mr. Yates, and Mr. Andrews. Good afternoon, Sheriff. This must be important business. Uh, Mr. Randolph, I understand you bought a hundred head of cattle from Mr. Edgar Smithers. Oh, I surely did. And a profitable transaction. But illegal. That's right. Those cattle belong to me. Is my duly registered trail brand? Ownership papers? Brand registration papers. Brand's pretty commonly known, Mr. Randolph. Mr. Smithers assured me that those cattle were strays, that they belonged to him. I'm sure Mr. Smithers believed that. Uh, you don't know the front of a steer from the back. But you, as a uh, dealer in cattle, I'm certain that you would question his title to branded steers. Well, I... Uh, I never even inspected that beef, gentlemen. I, uh... I found Mr. Smithers to be about as honorable a man as I've ever dealt with. I give him credit here to feed those children. Well, when he said he had that cattle, I, uh, I bought them sight unseen. That's too bad. You just have to work out some means of recouping your $300 from him. Where have you got them corralled? Corral? What? I, I sold them on the day of purchase. Matter of fact, I, uh, 
I have the papers right here. They're all uh, properly drawn and uh, executed by Mr. Smithers. Drew these papers up yourself? Well, naturally. I wasn't about to buy something I couldn't sell legally. Certainly not stolen property. Well, who'd you sell the stairs to? Well, I, uh, I'm afraid that that is my, uh, my personal business. Sir. Don't matter. These are good enough for any legitimate dealer. <sighs> Mr. Smithers, the good Samaritan. <laughs> Naive, yes, but uh, how much of a loss will this represent, Mr. Faber? Well, who says we're taking a loss yet? Well, the only recourse you have is with Mr. Smithers, and that that poor bumbling fellow is penniless. Of course, I suppose you could throw him in jail, but... But the kid. There's still the Cattlemen's Association. Now, if you think those scraps of paper are going to Rowdy, 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 no need for that. This gentleman here has obviously acted in good faith. Huh? It's just a matter of being taken in by a tornado and a fool what believes in Santa Claus. Yeah, well, you can't blame me for being a little upset, Mr. Randolph. That beef would have brought me $4,000 in Denver. Oh, that is a heavy loss, Mr. Faber. Oh, well, all the averages, I guess, can't win them all. Oh, by the way, uh, how much did you make on the transaction? Well, I made uh, 2700 clear. Well, whoever bought them sure knew what he was up to. Yes, well, I suppose there's no harm in my telling you. It happens to be a very respectable broker named Frank Travis. Travis, yeah, good man. I'm, uh, I'm sorry that it had to be at your expense, Mr. Faber. Never fear. I'll just take it out on someone else next time. You ain't gonna let him get away with this, are you? Look, you can stay here and sue Smithers if you want to. Me, I got her to take care of. Hey. Eh? Oh, uh, Mr. Yates. I really think it would be fruitless to pursue this matter any further with Mr. Smithers. After all, I know the orphans. Kill Fever! You old sidewinder, you. Well, you finally did it, huh, Frank? You finally turned to rustling. Oh, I only came along with the sheriff because I was so tickled to find out that you finally got taken. Thanks for picking him up, sheriff. Rowdy, biggest thief in Texas, Frank Travis. Look here, Gil. I knew that was your beef, but uh, I figured you sold it for trail cash. Not my beef, Frank. Owner's beef, and they expect to get cash for it. Four thousand dollars worth of cash. Ooh, you got a little problem. Well, here's my picture. I bought about seven, eight hundred head at about thirty dollars, and I'm moving them up to the mining country to pick up thirty-five to thirty-seven a head. But I could go bust just as easy. So I'll give you a beef back to you for what I paid for. Hmm, that's fine. Only what do we get three thousand dollars from the man who stole it? I hope. Sheriff, uh, do you agree that Randolph knew exactly what he was doing? No doubt about it. I could go on and say that he'd taken every man in the country at one time or another. Trouble is, he's got a whole satchel full of papers to hide behind. Well, if uh, you wouldn't mind looking the other way for a little bit, I might be able to feed him some of his own medicine. Well, if I'm going to be blind in one eye, I sure don't want to hear the details. I like a law man with a real feel for justice. Hey, when you pull up, right? Tomorrow morning. Oh, too soon, too soon. Can you give me four or five days? Mm. 48 hours, that's the outside. I don't get it. You're not expected to get it. All you gotta do is deliver this to the bank and do like you was told. Oh. Well, that's a sizable draft. As for provisions, we're moving out. Mr. Yates, I, uh, I couldn't help but uh, sense your animosity this afternoon. I want you to know that I'm... I'm only a businessman. Yeah. 
Well, it, uh, it wasn't the cattle we lost to Smethers that hurt so much. It's that other 200 head. Uh, tornadoes. 300 altogether? Oh, my, that's a, that's a tremendous beating for you to be taking. Yeah, well, that's what I told Mr. Favor, but he's the boss and gives the orders. So we just write it off. <laughs> Any idea where those strays wandered off to? If we did, we'd be out rounding them up. I suppose that storm dropped them about 50 counties west of here. Well. No. No, no. Lightning could never strike twice in the same place. Still. Clarence, uh... The next time you see Mr. Smithers, would you tell him that I'm uh, still in the market for stray cows? You never can tell. With him, it could happen. You don't mean to tell me that those little farmers didn't even know they were stealing. No, I wish they... They just looked at it like it was... Well, finders keepers, you know, and so did the Smithers. Well, a man like that I can understand, but not a kid. No, sir, every one of them is a born rustler, and mighty few of them ever outgrow it. Most of the kids I've ever known ought to be froze stiff time they could walk and thawed out with caution after 20. All right, Ruddy. Take everybody here and go out and cut out 200 head. I'm ready to move at first light. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Wishbone. I got a special job for you and Mushy. Uh, you come to the right man, Mr. Favor. Anytime you want anything done right, you just ask me. Of all the big mouth gravel headed nitwits, why didn't you stop me? Or better yet, why didn't I save my money? That way I could have bought back those cows and we wouldn't have to be here. Talk about tornadoes. Time this is over, you'll wish that one last week and carried you off. Keep your gun handy. Evening, miss. We'd like to see Mr. Smithers. Come on in. I'll get him. Look, there's my head. Later, you idiot. You stay here. I'm gonna do the talking. Evening. You gentlemen waiting? Uh, oh, it's uh, fast time. Uh, my name is uh, George W. Haggerty, and this is my friend H. Mushgrove Watson. Pleasure. Uh, my, what a handsome group of children. Tell Uncle George, what's your name? You put me down, you billy goat! Uh, billy goat? That is a nasty way to treat our guests, treating them in such a chavalier manner. Now, you... you Everybody, into bed. Get ready for your bath. Be nimble. Otherwise, I'll have to, uh, take uh, drastic measures. I, I must prefer my apologies, Mr. Agony. Not at all, Mr. Smithers. Children will be children. Lord love them. As a matter of fact, that's one reason we came here. We heard you run an orphanage and thought maybe you could use some help. Well, a man in my position could use help, but, uh... You see, Mushgrove and I was both raised in Foundland homes. Oh, not really. Yeah. Oh, that's music to my ears. <laughs> Don't that take you back? Oh, it sure does, Mr. Haggerty. Well, I, uh, I could use the help, but I'm afraid I couldn't afford uh, 
Mr. Smithers, you're looking at two road-weary, lonesome travelers just looking for a place like home we can hang our hats for a spell. We'd even work for our keep. Oh, I, I, I couldn't ask you gentlemen to do that. Mr. Smithers, we're asking you. Why, Mushgrove and me, we cook, do laundry, and, well, we certainly do love children. Well, uh, my goodness, that's certainly lively tonight, aren't they? And it isn't as if we didn't have experience. Why, there just isn't anything we can't do for kids. I could use the help. <laughs> then it's all settled. Settled it is. Uh, you can uh, bunk in the back and... Uh, well, here, you might just as well start on their baths. And if you don't mind, I, uh, I have quite a little sewing to do. This saves a lot of... You know, it, it's a blessing is what it is. <laughs> said bath, and you're going to get a bath. You and that bean shooter. Now take off those clothes. You hate me! What? I can't open that door in there! And the black knight thrust his faithful sword into the dragon's heart. Mortally stricken, the fierce giant fell, roaring his fury and breathing the flames of inferno into the heavens. Then he was dead. One last mighty bellow, and the terrible dragon was no more. The black knight put the princess on his horse, and they drove away into the setting sun to live happily ever after. <laughs> yes, sir, I missed my calling. Sire Wishbone, the black knight of Texas. Bedtime stories. I think you read them very well. It usually takes me all of the Black Knight and all of Mother Goose to get them this quiet. Must be that I can bore them quicker. Oh, this seems to be the best part of the day. It's like being in a room with a host of angels. Some of the dirty faces, I must admit. You don't mind my asking, Mr. Smithers, how'd you get saddled with all these little <laughs> angels? Saddled? Well, I, I guess it did seem like that in the beginning. I was a librarian. For 20 years, I lived behind two stories of thick Philadelphia stone in a world where my only friends existed between worn leather bindings and dusty squares of parchment. Chaucer, Keats, Tennyson, all oh, fine men all, loyal to a T. But hardly the proper association to prepare me for a career as a rancher. But my brother died and left me this place, complete with little Betsy. And I had no other choice. So it was Westwood Ho. And just when I was beginning to figure out which end of a plow was which, Betsy found Johnny and Susie down by the river. Their folks were drowned in the storm. Seemed to be no other place for them. So... Word got around, and before I knew it, Pedro and Rob and Danny, they showed up in the barn, hiding under the hay. You know, Mr. Haggerty, at that moment, I decided I was going to go back to my stone and parchment world, no matter how make believe it was, but then one day, I, I heard them talking, and I knew then that this was where I belonged. 
What do you mean you heard him talking? Oh, well, it was out by the barn. Johnny asked Danny if he knew who God was. And Danny said, Mr. Smithers. Well, all the children laughed, and Johnny says, how do you know that? And Danny says, Mr. Smithers always says, with God, I retire. And with God, I get up. And as Mr. Smithers goes to bed with me and gets up with me, then Mr. Smithers must be God. Well, I, uh, I corrected his innocent blasphemy. <laughs> but if I can give them that, Mr. Haggerty, think what they can give to me. Wishbone? It's after nine o'clock. Mr. Faber will have the herd up there by now. We ought to get going. Well, Mr. Smithers, he won't let them go college until class is over. You're in class, Mike. Got expelled. Have to study all by myself in the barn. Where'd you get that hat? Danny found it. He's letting me wear it. Think the owner might want it back? Tough. He lent it to me. <laughs> you mind if I try it on? Yeah. Don't crush it. Fits perfect. Huh. Here. Get to work and hang up these clothes. Give me back my hat. Do you mind if I wear it while we hang up the clothes? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, taking hats away from kids. You're mean. What? Why, you? I got your hat back for you, didn't I? Yeah, but you didn't have to holler at my friend. I'll help you, much girl. Thank you. be bothering our friends over there while they're doing their chores. Now, look, we still have arithmetic, but I tell you what, we'll go hiking for lunch and we'll make a picnic out of it. Yeah! Hey, hey, Children. Look there. A blue bunting. Oh, the first of this year. Come on, let's go on over the hill. I'm sure this is cow country. Oh, we've got all afternoon. What do you say we pick me first? Yeah! Listen, listen. I'm sure I heard a steer ball. Come on. Stay right here. Don't go out there. 
never in my born days. Never. I tell you what. Let's all make a guess as to how many there are, and the one who comes the closest gets an extra piece of cake. Ten hundred. Two thousand. Twenty-five hundred. Mr. Smithers, maybe you better go on into the bank and tell that fellow you got another windfall. Uh, hey, you two get back here. Those cars can be dangerous. Now, you pay attention to what Mr. Haggerty tells you. You know, it's a lucky thing Mr. Haggerty came along when he did. I, ne I never would have thought of looking in this direction. Well, let's all have lunch. I'm going to buy a dog. I'm going to buy a horse. I'm big enough. Uh, Mr. Smithers, this is no time for a picnic. Must be 200, maybe more. If that bank closes, you might lose this herd over the weekend. Yeah, a storm or a stampede, maybe. More likely rustlers. Uh, now nah, you're talking. Maybe you're right. There doesn't seem to be much time. Tell you what, we'll have our picnic on the way into town. What do you say, all right? Yeah. Let's go. All right, now, come here. Let's go. so many watch. We found 200 more. Closer to 2 million. They're even fatter than the others. Uh, they must have straggled in overnight. As you said, sir, lightning can strike more than once in the same place. Oh, yes, quite, uh, quite, quite. Uh, uh, two, uh, 200, did you say? Well, approximately. We didn't take time for an accurate count. Oh, well, that's perfectly all right. Your word is good as gold with me, Mr. Smithers. Uh, look, why don't you, uh, why don't you sit down? I mean, uh, uh, take a deep breath and relax. I I'll be back in a moment. Uh, oh, no rush, Mr. Oh, uh, Clarence, uh, see that, uh, that Mr. Smithers makes himself perfectly at home, will you? At home. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, why don't we play games, hmm? Okay. You, Mr. Travis. Drink? Uh, thank you, no. I, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, verify that you're still in the market. You see, there's a, a slight possibility that I might be able to get hold of uh, 200 head. I'm still in the market, but you'll have to make whatever deal you got by this evening, because I'm pushing out at dawn. Oh, I, uh, I can do that. Uh, the price is uh, still the same? 30 ahead. Mm -hmm. Two hundred. Let's see. That would bring me uh, six thousand dollars, right? Well, if you don't find me here, I'll be at the hotel. All right. Fine. Fine. Do it, Mr. Randolph. And it's a deal, Mr. Smithers. Three dollars a head. Did I hear you say three dollars a head? You did? Not that it's any of your business. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Haggerty, our new cook. And the first one to see those cows, so it makes it my business. And as an ex-foundling myself, I'm concerned for these orphans. So let's start by agreeing that three dollars a head won't even buy the flies off those cows' hides. Very well. I'm a charitable man myself. Name a figure. Well, at the railhead. This is not a railhead. I'll go five. Mister, I'd carry them there piggyback before I'd let them go for money like that. Fifteen heads more like it. Fifteen? For each one? Greenback dollars. Now, I may be just a, a hash slinger, but I know a little bit of something about cattle. 
three thousand dollars. What? That's utterly preposterous. Mr. Haggerty, that does seem to go beyond reason. Let him go. There's plenty of cattle buyers. You can usually find them hanging around saloons after hours. Now, now, Mr. Smithers, you and I have both dealt fairly with each other up until now. Why don't we just uh, agree on a sensible price? Say, uh, say ten. Ten? Yes, but I must close the deal tonight. Of course, uh, if I don't close the deal, I will only lose a deal. But uh, you and those dear children will, will suffer grievously. Well, uh, Mr. Haggerty, I, I don't see how I could spend more than five hundred. Three thousand. Well, I can see we're not going to get anywhere this way. I'll just saddle up and ride into town. Who knows? I might even make a better deal. No, uh, no, no need for that. I've uh, come this far. I, I might as well go all the way. All right. Three thousand. Three thousand? Yes, but don't you come to me with any more of your stray cows. Well, I, uh, I feel a little badly about this money, too, Calvin. It, uh, does seem to be a, a little extra providence. Nine. Nine fifty-three. Three thousand. Uh, and on those papers, you can just put in my name, George Haggerty. See, I'm the one that found them. Just sign with my customary X. to throw cold water, but this is a heap of money for us to come by with just luck, you know. What do you mean? What he means, Johnny, is that anything so valuable is not so easily come by. And those cows over there are worth a lot more than any of us has ever imagined. And it's not likely that such gold on the hoof, so to speak, would be left around for us to grab in a selfish world. What he means is... We think those cows belong to somebody, and they lost them. And, well, it just didn't right for us to get rich at their expense. Uh, Mr. Smithers, I think I can round up the fellows that belong to this money. Children? We think you should. All right, I'll go get my horses. I see you go on in there and get our things. that you, you were moving out, abandoning them. Oh, well, what my poor simple ramrod thinks I'm going to do and what I finally decide to do are two entirely different things. Uh, Mr. Favor's men spotted them over here. I volunteered to help drive them back. Yes, well, I'm afraid you found them a little too late. 
because it so happens that I just purchased them legally from a man who certified that he was the legal owner. <sighs> Don't see how that could be. I've seen Mr. Favor's papers. Who's X? What? George Haggerty. I wrote it there in the first sentence. I, George Haggerty, do hereby warrant. I see. You wrote that thing yourself. Well, I... But he couldn't read or write. This is about as binding as a rotten rubber band, Mr. Randolph. I think you'd just better forget it. You better come with me, Sheriff. I'm beginning to think I'm going to need you. Musgrove! 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 Oh, hello, Mike. Have you seen Musgrove? I was just going to look for him. Well, so am I. Come on, let's go find Uncle him. Uncle George? What? Are you and Musgrove coming back? Oh, well, I... Well, yeah. Next time we're around these parts, we'll sure come back. I'd like that. So would I. I was just going to give Musgrove this hat. I treated Danny, my lizard for it. And besides, it fits Musgrove better than me. It sure does. You know that's mighty nice of you. Come on, let's go find him again. Isn't that nice? Why, why, it's a scarf. Just what I've always needed. And a red one, too. I hope you find out who the money belongs to, Mr. Haggerty. Oh, oh, I will, Robbie. Well, I already found one thing. I found out the world isn't full of little rustlers. Goodbye, Uncle George. Bye. Now, all of you stand back there. Get away from the horse. That's it. I want to see George Haggerty. Well, you just missed him. My goodness, you look very pale, Mr. Randolph. Come on in and sit down. What do you mean, I just missed him? Well, I, I think he uh, went to look for the rightful owner of the money. You hear that? He's making a getaway. Go after him. Slow down. Now, what do you look like? But don't sit there asking stupid questions. He was bald-headed and runty, and he had whiskers. Now go find him. Whiskers, hmm? Runty? Oh, that sounds like Stumpy George Hogarth. Yep, he goes by Haggerty, Hogarth, Hogan. He has to stick to H's because he's got his initials tattooed. I am not interested in the details. Go find him! Uh, I'll have to round up a posse. Stumpy George is a lot of men. Go after him! Go after him! You'll never find him. Do you realize that you cost me $3,000? Well, that makes it just about even, doesn't it? Isn't that what you made on that other transaction? I made $2,700. I had to give him $300. And if you want to know what I think, Smithers, I think those have all been the same cattle. And if he doesn't find uh, Hogarth or Haggerty or whatever his name is, you are going to owe me $300. Well, uh, I'll pay whatever I'm obliged to, Mr. Randolph. Uh, uh, oh, Mr. Smithers didn't make the second deal with you. He made the first, and that one you sewed up nice and tight and legal. So if anybody's got a claim against Mr. Smithers, it's me. And by me, I just want to thank you for gathering up my cattle. I think you got it off real cheap, Mr. Randolph. I mean, some folks would have to pay $1,000 or more for that kind of education. True, true. Oh, gee, they were the nicest men. Oh, I can't believe that about Mr. Haggerty and Mushgrove. What do you mean you can't believe? You, after what they did, and you... No, oh, what's the do?
one. Thirty-two thousand five hundred. There you are, Cantwell. And I must say, I'm relieved to be rid of it. It's more than I'm used to carry. Payroll and allotments for six months. Mounts up surprisingly. Even for a small post. Oh, uh, I didn't mean anything derogatory. I've heard you plan to retire. Any day. As soon as they send my replacement, I'll be done with the army. All of it. For good. All I want is to walk out of here and never see another uniform again as long as I live. Sorry you feel like that, Cantwell. I don't think it does you much credit. Well, I don't care what you think, Colonel. Well, anyway, good luck. Visitor, I'm always glad to see. Oh, it must have been the paymaster, huh? You been in the army? Oh, yes. Is Major Canwell in his offices? As far as I know. Good. Hey, what did he do? Murder a general? Just drunk and disorderly. Or repeat his offenses. Not the usual punishment here for that? No, but he's an unusual case. He's Major Cantwell's own orderly, and he took advantage of it. Anyway, I guess the Major had to make an example of him. Oh, Fibber. Cattle delivered? You'll uh, want your pay. It can wait. It is in case you was coming out to release this man. You can wait a lot longer out in this weather than he can. Were you ever in the army, Mr. Favor? Oh, yeah, but i never seen nothing like this. Your sympathies are wasted on that man. But his time's up, so I can oblige you. Sergeant, cut him loose. Caster, turn all our made property into quartermaster. Let me get up. Thanks. Colonel.
Come in, neighbor. Drink, Mr. Faber? No, no thanks. I thought all cowmen rushed for a drink. First thing off the trail. I'll just take the money, thanks. Of course, you uh, want to get back to your cows. All right. Think a fort can be run without discipline, Mr. Faber? Do you uh, run your trail crew without it? There is a bit of difference between discipline and brutality. Oh, is there? What's brutal to one may not be to another. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's all right. See you next year, I guess. I think not. You'll have to deal with someone else next year. I won't be here. Oh, transfer? Retirement. Don't say you didn't know I was that old. Oh, there was one thing that surprised me. I didn't realize you was a colonel. Well, that fellow out there did call you colonel, didn't he? Are you trying to insult me, Faber? Just curious. Why should that insult you? It's none about? of your business. Didn't mean to offend. Now, don't apologize. Just get out. Go have your drink at the suppers. Leave me to mine. Why don't you ask him right now? Uh, Mr. Favor, your uh, men tell me your boss and the trail herds are. That's right. My name's Castor. I wondered if you might need a hand at the railroad. Oh, sorry, fella. I'm full up right now. Uh, no way for me to work a ride just to the next town. About my, uh, being tied to that wheel in there. I can explain about that. I'm not asking for no explanations. Yeah, but maybe I owe one, seeing I'm asking to join you. Seems I was a little too familiar with the bottle. Yeah, I heard. I get bored out here. Nothing to do, no place to go. I can believe that. Yeah. Well, being his own orderly, maybe I asked for it. I took advantage, even though I knew the kind of man he was. Stickler for the rule. Anyway, he threw the book at me. Mr. Faber, that's a long walk to that railroad. Oh, well, sure, we can save you the shoe leather anyways. I'll buy you a drink? I want to try some of ours. That is, unless you swore off. Oh, Faber. Can I see you for a moment, please? Outside. There's uh, something I'd like you to do for me, if you will. If I can, well, what is it? Just uh, drop this package in the mail at the nearest post office you touch. Next place we'll be hitting is Junction City. You'd 
do a lot better with regular army mail. Well, no, no, not now. Uh, that went out with the paymaster today. Stupidly, I forgot to put this in. Anyway, time is not the important thing. It's personal, not army business. You'll see I've addressed it to myself, care of Postmaster Tucson. Well, it's no trouble to me if you're not worried about time. Uh, just keep it uh, secure and confidential. I mean, it's personal papers of considerable value to me. I would want it lost. Well, the best I could do is keep it with me in my saddlebags, all right? Uh, yes, thanks. Talk you ought to let me ride with you. Now didn't he mention you? Good thing, too. You and him come blows, I bet. Say, what's this um, colonel business all about? Huh? You haven't heard the story? It's not important. Buy you that one for the trail? Good enough. Sir, remember me, Whaley. I was with Cushing in the twenty-third. Uh, captain already. Motion wasn't so fast or easy in my day. Well, what brings you way out here, Captain? Assignment, sir. I'm your replacement. You're you're replacing me? Yes, sir. I know I wasn't expected. The fact is, I'm carrying my own orders with me. And the replacement won't take effect until retreat tomorrow. But I didn't know how long it would take me to get here. They're replacing me with a young green captain up from the ranks. <laughs> I'm hardly green, sir. I suppose the activity at this fort has diminished somewhat. They know how to insult a man. I'm sure there was no such intention. There's certainly no such feeling on my part. No, of course not. Well, so be it. I'm relieved I can retire, be done with it. To retreat tomorrow, I say. Excellent. I'll, uh, I'll be ready. Well, well, Colonel, I have news for you. What did you call me? Colonel, that's the news I have for you. It's all in these dispatches I brought. It's also common knowledge around Fort Leavenworth. And I must say, Everybody's delighted. What are you talking about? You, sir? They held another court of inquiry. How dare you pry into that? Sir, you don't understand. It's all in these dispatches I brought. They reversed their previous decision. They've vindicated you completely. And they've restored you to your proper rank of full colonel. Not only that, but... Maybe you better read it for yourself. Proceed... directly to the city of Washington, D.C., where... Yes, sir. You're to get a congressional citation for a distinguished career, promotion to brigadier general, and retirement at full pay and requisites. And I must say, sir, it's richly deserved. The whole service is pleased. Colonel? Sir?
uh, Drover favor. Is he gone? Yes, sir, over an hour ago. Do you know where they're camped for the night? He didn't say, sir, but probably over by Chalk Springs. That's the nearest water on the trail. I'll want a horse saddled right away. But, sir, it's almost time for a tree call. That's an order, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, pardon, sir. Would you please check this duty list for me? I have time now, Lieutenant. But, sir, it has to be read or a tree. Lieutenant! What is the first requirement of an officer? I, I... Command! The ability to take responsibility. Now, in your judgment, is that list correct? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Well, then read it or retreat. If you made a mistake, suffer the consequences. That's why they made you an officer. Yes, sir. What are you doing here, Whaley? Why, nothing, sir. I was just looking around. I didn't think you'd mind. According to your orders, Captain, you will not take over here until retreat tomorrow. At that time, I will turn over to you all post records and monies, as well as this office. Until then, this is my private office. I will thank you to stay out of it. I beg your pardon. I meant no discourtesy. Though I can hardly see how I've offended you. But let's say you didn't. Let's see you don't, if you please. Anything you say, Colonel. Ah, you're the man I want to know. But the smell I haven't had such food in a month or something. <laughs> Just a couple of clods that was too tough for the stew. I just don't ask me to mind my manners. I'm a man starved for good eating. <laughs> Come on over and meet the rest of the crew, Captain. Who's he? I'm just a drummed out dog robber. Saving shoe leather to the railroad. Man, meet Castor. He's riding with us. Hello. How are you? Howdy. Hi. the troops. I wonder if you'd mind stepping over to the men's mess hall for a moment, please. Not now, Sergeant. Whatever it is, you'll have to attend to it yourself. But I'm afraid I can't. This is something you just have to see for yourself. I told you, Sergeant, I'm busy. I can't be bothered. But, Colonel, please. Sergeant, do I have to order you? No, sir. Uh, wait. They say it's important? Yes, sir. Well, what is it? I can't tell you, sir, if you'll just come with me. Busted. Some running in with the brass. Just as he was about to make general. When it comes to soldiering or drinking, there's none better. It sure is nice and big of you to stick up for him after what he'd done to you. Well, like I told Mr. Favor, maybe I had it coming. I was a little uh, too fond of his liquor. And if it go good right now. Well, you're out of luck here. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, this asked what was in the package he gave your boss. Oh, I didn't know he gave you a package, boss. Oh, he's probably saving it for the trail. For snake bites, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. All right, that's enough coffee. Anybody on night guard with Roddy? Let's get to it.
sugar from someplace. Did you get a bedroll? Oh, no, no, thanks. I'll get one. Well, good night. Good night. I only hope when I leave the post they feel the same way about me. I think they like me, Whaley. I'm mistaken. They love me. I don't believe that. They showed their respect tonight. Any cause would serve for a celebration? Oh, no, sir. It's not every day to have a man promoted to brigadier. That's a great honor. Is it? I never realized before what a fragile thing that is. Even uh, one slip, one mistake, they'd all be delighted to help kick me back down the ladder. They'd like nothing better than to see me broken again. Even now. Including you. Uh, plenty of coffee when that guard changes. Yeah, just put on a new pot. You know, I swear it's gonna snow. Better it could at that. This late in the year, too. Mm. Well, what are you doing out here this time of night, Major? I uh, want a word with you, Favor. If you don't mind. I'd like that package back. I've changed my mind about sending it. Why not? It's yours. Over in my saddlebags. valuable to me, but you didn't ask for the responsibility. You guaranteed nothing. I'm sure you did your best. But it's going from my saddlebags. Well, I'll just have to find it. All right, keep looking, everybody. I just don't get it. I know all my men can be trusted. Yes, of course. I'm sure it'll turn up. Uh, we'll turn it up. If it's only a bottle of whiskey like that caster fella said, what's the problem? Caster. Was he here? Yeah, he was riding with us to the railroad. And he was real interested in that package. I told you it was confidential. He saw you give it to me at the settlers. Where is Caster? Well, I just seen him leave a while ago. I have to be headed toward Junction City and the railroad. You know this train very well? No, it was attached to headquarters. He never rode patrol. Can't get very far in this dark anyways. We'll get after him just before sunup. I'm going now. I might be able to catch him before dawn. Major? 
Look, it's just too tough trying to track him at night. We'd probably lose his trail. Mr. Favor, time is important. I have to have that package. It's vital to me. All right, all right. I'll, I'll send a couple of the men with you. Well, you've done enough already. It's not your problem. Package really worth all this. I think it was clear by now. What's in it so almighty important? I told you, personal papers. I want to get back to your herd, I suppose. I'll have to pretty soon. I can understand that. Besides, I'm afraid we've lost him good. Best thing for you to do, maybe, is to go to Junction City and see the marshal. No marshals. And get some help from the fort. No army either. I told you this is a private matter. All right. Have it your way. I'm afraid I've helped all I can. Favor. How do I know for sure Castor has that package at all? Look, I told... Could all be a blind? You could be walking away with my package. Good. Well, you I... better stay right with me till the package is in my hand. You think that thing's going to change my mind? You're wrong. Besides, I think you've got better sense than to use it. That package isn't back at the fort by retreat. You're going to be in very serious trouble. I am? Yes. All right, let's have it. What's in the package? You saw it yesterday. Oh, yeah, the money. $30,000. Of course. You retire, leave for parts unknown before the money's missed. Pick it up in Tucson, skip across the border to Mexico before they can trace you. Very nice. Is that what happened before when they demoted you to major? Those charges were false. But they did demote you. I couldn't disprove them, but I was innocent. And this time? Everyone thought me a thief. Why shouldn't I be one? But, uh, now you want the money back? To put it where it belongs. The custody of the commandant. Now come, what changes your mind? It's enough for you to know. If that money isn't back in the box by retreat, the loss will be discovered. I don't intend to take the blame. I can tell them you saw the money when I paid you. And when I left the room for a moment. And they almost made you a general. Well, you go on and accuse me. I don't think you can make it stick. Anyways, I'll take that chance. Ever, I'm warning you. Stop. Go ahead, old man. You'll have to shoot me in the back.
sheriff. Go get him. Now, never mind me. Get Chester. Oh, take it. Here, let me. Easy. Uh, uh, don't you understand he's getting away? No, he ain't. He went into that box canyon. The only way for him to get out is past us. We just have to wait for him. You sure? I'm sure. Now, lie back. Take it easy. We can't just sit here and wait. We've only got to retreat tonight. Let's go in. You're not going nowhere except back to the post and the doctor. You fix it. I can't do enough. But it'll have to be enough. We're going to the post. Not without that money, Fever. Do you understand that? Not without the money. If you're gonna be that stupid, I don't have to be a part of it, Colonel. General. Of course not. How you feel? Sure, he's still in there. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get you to a doctor. Not without the money. We waited too long already. I've never pleaded with anybody in my life. I'm pleading with you now. Pleading for my life. That's what I'm thinking of. Not, not that life. shoulder. Brigadier General Stars. You know when I bought those favor? The day I graduated from the point. I swore I'd never rest until I could wear them. I came close. War hero. Eagle Colonel. Job in Washington. So close. And the charge. Regularity of records, they call them. Completely false. I couldn't defend myself. Quick court martial. Demotion. Is a major, no honor, no worldly goods, nothing but disgrace, and yesterday exoneration, promotion, just one stupid mistake. My whole life, the army, literally. West Point, Mexican War, war between the states. I was a southerner, state with the Union. Lost everything, even my wife, children. Never saw them again. Except the army, life 
Lake of Service Thunder. That's why I had to. Hey, I've got to get that money back. You're dying. It's my life. You think Castor's just gonna hand the money back? I've got the power to arrest him. Take him back to the fort? Do you think you can put that money back then? Nobody the wiser? I'll put it back. Do everything I can to make it right. Well, I guess there's nothing for it, but I go in and get him. Think you can handle this if he flushes past me? Yes. Fella, all you gotta do is give back the money and, and you can go free. You think I'd fall for that? I'm not stupid. I know where Cantwell got that money, so he can't let me walk away alive. Yes, he can. I'll see to it again. You got my word on it. <laughs> Your word? <laughs> Keep out of this favor, it's none of your concern. I'm afraid I'm already in it. Don't shoot. Uh, 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 don't move. I was going to bring your horse back to you. Well, that, um... Package, I thought it was booze when I took it. All right. Just give me the money and you can go. Well, how do I know I can trust you two? After you get your hands on all that money. I'm telling you, it's going back to the fort. <laughs> Cantwell's gonna take it back? You expect me to believe that? Uh, I'd rather burn it. You got it in that bad for him, huh? Let's just say it's my way of tying him to the wheel. Look, apparently neither one of us meant to be out here. All I want to do is sell my cattle. All you wanted was a drink. But we are here, so let's get out of it the best way possible, huh? If you try and take me back, I'm going to see you and Cantwell both in Leavenworth with me. I told you, you'll be able to go free. I'll have to get out of the saddlebag.
Now, get me back to the fort. Relieve your man, driver. Get you to bed. Oh, wait. Souvenir. You stars. Why? I couldn't accept the honor. No. You gonna tell him? I've always paid for my mistakes. I will this time. No. Those records. We're keeping them. Is that doctor? He's right here, sir. What is it? Gunshot wound in the middle. He's in pretty bad shape. Records, monies, all in order. He's dead. Strange, lonely man, Cantwell. Good soldier, though. Strict, tough, hard sometimes. Not always right, perhaps. Maybe not. But if he made mistakes, I guess he's paid for them. Welcome. See you next year. <laughs> 